I'm Doug Brown. The Texas Rangers fire manager Chris Woodward in his fourth season on the job. The team is 12 games below 500 after spending more than $500 million in free agency last winter. Third base coach Tony Beasley is now the interim manager for the rest of the season. Kevin Durant wants the Nets to trade him, but so far they're not obliging. ESPN's Brian Windhorst. This is not a team that's tearing down looking to rebuild. This is a team that honestly believes, whether you think it's crazy or not, that they can compete for a championship this year. And so they're not going to yield, and they've made that position very clear. Brian Windhorst on Get Up. LSU quarterback Miles Brennan is leaving college football. He was the starter for the Tigers in 2020, but tore a muscle that ended his season. He missed all of last season with a broken left arm. Clemson defensive end Xavier Thomas will miss up to six weeks after hurting his foot during a scrimmage on Saturday. He'll need surgery, but the team is hopefully could be back by late September. Titans linebacker Bud Dupree pleads guilty to a misdemeanor assault charge. He gets probation. How would you love a chance to save some money on car insurance? GEICO can help. Switch today and see all the ways you could save with great rates and discounts. It's easy. Simply go to GEICO.com to get a rate quote and get started seeing how much you could save. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. ESPN Baton Rouge. New Orleans, Alexandria, <laughs> live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. And off we go. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us. AFR presented by Relief Windows. I'm Matt. Love you, Matt. Paul O'Neill. They're chanting Paul O'Neill's name. Mm, you so. And Mr. Toby Tom Plick. All right, we're here. Glad you are as well. Get out there, make it a good one. Hope you had an awesome weekend. Ton to get to. We will recap Saints Texans. Uh, the preseason AP Top 25 poll is out. LSU is not in it. We will get to that. We did have media availability today at LSU practice, so I will give you a practice report coming up shortly. Uh, but we will start with what everyone is talking about. Uh, by now, you know, uh, Miles Brennan has ended his football career. Uh, he is not entering the transfer portal. He is not looking to play somewhere else in 2022 or head off to the NFL. Miles Brennan is just finished with football. Whenever we got into uh, practice this morning, it was uh, evident. Uh, the first thing most of the media does is go right to where the quarterbacks are, uh, and there were only four. It was Jaden Daniels, Garrett Nussmeyer, Walker Howard, and one of the walk-ons who was there as well. There was an obvious omission with no Miles Brennan. Uh, we learned a short time later, as LSU did in fact confirm that Miles Brennan not only uh, has left the team, but he is um, retiring from football. He will not play any longer. Uh, Brian Kelly did tweet a message from his uh, Twitter account earlier today. We are grateful to Miles for everything he's done for LSU football. Miles is a great leader who has made a tremendous impact on this program, and he has earned the respect of everyone here throughout his commitment and love for LSU. Miles has always embodied the traits required to fulfill our mission to graduate champions, and we have full confidence those traits will help him succeed at every step of his journey moving forward. So, um, you know, last week when we had the full access to practice and um, it, it was evident that Miles Brennan was was running third, uh, talk here... And, and the observation I made, which clearly proved to be a, a, a correct one, uh, unfortunately, was that Miles just seemed very disinterested. And for a guy that was in his sixth year, who had battled so much adversity, who, I mean, this is it. There, there should have been urgency. The most important position on the field, the oldest guy on the team, the guy who's been through it all, he should have been the one that was loud and vocal and leading the drills and and it just wasn't there. He was very much going through the motions. I want to be very clear. That is not a criticism. I want to be so abundantly clear 
That is not a criticism. It's just an observation, an observation that proved to be correct. Um, I, let me take some time here to kind of go through all the questions a lot of people have. The, the why now, the what's next, the what does it mean for the quarterback position, the thoughts on Brennan's career. I want to go through all of it. But first, just sincere appreciation uh, for the perseverance that Miles Brennan showed throughout his LSU career. Because that dude has been through a lot. Y'all, a lot. When you think about the fact that Miles Brennan committed to Les Miles and Cam Cameron, showed up here, and Matt Canada was his first offensive coordinator. You had the head coach and the OC fighting in practice. Was there for the loss to Troy. Decided to just take one for the team in red shirt in 2018 to set up the future of the program. That was very much a selfless team-centered decision that he made. Backed up Joe Burrow in 2019. 2020, of course, was supposed to be his year. We know what happened. Three weeks in, three straight games of 300 yards passing. That had never happened to an LSU quarterback for his first three starts in history. And then he rips his abdominal muscle and loses the remainder of the season. He comes back for 2021. He's going to battle Max Johnson for the job, and we know what happens. Right on the eve of training camp, he breaks his arm in a freak accident when he, he fell down out on a fishing trip. And now this. Uh, <laughs> Matt Can uh, Cam Cameron, Matt Canada, Steve Ensminger, Jake Peets, <laughs> Les Miles, Ed Ogeron, Brian Kelly. That dude has seen it all. He's been through a tremendous amount, and he deserves a ton of admiration for his perseverance. There are a lot of players that battle injury and persevere through a lot, but rarely is it at quarterback where it's so high profile. I'd, look, I'll bring up Andre Anthony. Y'all, Andre Anthony... Just finished his sixth year at LSU a year ago. And three, he came back for a sixth year. A guy who redshirted his first year because he was coming off a knee injury in high school, tore his ACL and missed his entire second season as well. Battles back to become a contributor and a really good player. Decides to come back for a sixth season after COVID. And three games in, boom, injury done for the season again. Andre Anthony battled through a lot. The emotional reaction from the fans isn't what it is today for Brennan. It's not because Andre Anthony wasn't a great Tiger. It's just that Miles Brennan is more high-profile playing quarterback. So I, I understand why it is what it is. A lot of people have asked, why now? Let's go through some of the timeline just to reset, to, to remind you of how this all transpired. Miles Brennan was, gonna, was the starter in 2020. He gets injured. Finley and Johnson both play. So Brennan entering, tw Finley transfers before 2021. Brennan's spot as the starter was not solidified. He was going to have to compete with Max Johnson in 2021 to win the job. Well, of course, Brennan gets injured. Johnson starts the whole season. So LSU had an incumbent, and Miles entered the transfer portal in November. Last November, Miles Brennan entered the transfer portal. Of course, we all know Ed Ogeron was fired. Brian Kelly was hired. And then Max Johnson entered the portal. So LSU was left with one scholarship quarterback. It was Garrett Nussmeyer. So as you remember, Brian Kelly had a conversation with Miles Brennan. And this is what Brian Kelly said as a reminder. Actually, could you please play the Brennan conversation with Brian Kelly, please? One of the questions I asked him, obviously, was, you know, well, what's the offensive philosophy? What's your mindset, your scheme? Well, obviously, you don't have an offensive coordinator hired yet, but like, what are you, what are you thinking? And he pretty much told me, like, look, this is my offense. You know, I, I'm coaching it. Um, I'm in the quarterback room every day with the quarterback. And he pretty much just said, look, I've been doing this for 30-plus years. I can do anything that we need to do to win the game. So I really I, I base it a lot of, around personnel and who we have and, and the quarterback and what the quarterback does best. And the quarterback and I will have, you know, a really good relationship. And it'll be, what do you like, what do you don't like? And then, you know, we can bounce ideas off of each other. He was like, and I, you know, I, I've done everything. And so the sky's really the limit. Uh, he was like, I just want to have a chance to, to see who we have at certain positions and, and see where we need to get some guys and, and then really start to build the foundation of the offense. You know, and when he said that, it was just like, 
there's no limitations to this offense. So Miles Brennan was excited. Brian Kelly said to Miles Brennan, look, you're going to have to compete for a job wherever you go. Why not compete here? So on December the 16th, Miles Brennan sent out the tweet. It was the Wolf of Wall Street, I'm not leaving, uh, gif. And Brennan said, there's no place like home. Let's ride Tiger Nation. People were excited. Brennan was coming back. And he very much became the sentimental favorite, of course. So so subsequent to that, LSU added Jaden Daniels. And that's really what changed. At that point, it was evident what this offense was going to be. transfer market wasn't that robust for Miles Brennan. This team was very obvious. Miles Brennan had a lot of of group of five opportunities. He had group of five opportunities. But the the power five opportunities and the power five opportunities to start were non-existent. The power five opportunities to come in and compete were lean. So Brennan looked at it and said, well, I could just stay home and and try to compete for a job, which is what he did. There's one other thing I want to address for certain before I move it any further. And it's the idea, and I've seen this a lot today in a lot of the comments on social media posts and whatnot. And it's not to say that social media is representative of everything, but if someone's thinking, a lot of people are thinking it. Miles Brennan is neither a quitter nor is he soft. I've heard too much of that today. First things first, let me remind you that the kid played half of a football game with a torn abdominal. I can't even imagine how excruciating that must have been to continue throwing a football with a torn abdominal muscle. But he did. An injury that cost him the whole season. He played half a game with it. As far as Miles being a quitter, I just went through everything through which he's persevered during his career. The reality is, y'all, Miles Brennan doesn't love football. It's not his first love, and that's okay. When Joe Burrow would be in the film room, Miles Brennan was in the deer stand. It's okay to have a diversity of of interests and loves and passions. Miles loves to hunt and fish, and he's now engaged. He's going to be a husband, and... All of those things matter a lot in his world, and football is one of the things he loves, but it's not the thing that he loves. And it's not the thing he needs either. So all of that together has led you to this point. A lot of people have said, hey, hopefully he gets a shot at the combine. No, like, this is it for Miles Brennan. Like, think about what I was telling you last week at practice, that burning fire, it's evident it's not there anymore. And if that's the case, man... You had a good run. A lot of things didn't go your way, but you're still a national champion. You got to quarterback the LSU Tigers. And you you move on with life. And it's okay to make that decision. Not everybody wants to go play 15 years in the NFL and grind their life away for that goal. If you do, great. But that's not where Miles is in his life. And it, quite honestly, was never where he was in his life at least as long as we've known him. You know, Brennan's career at LSU will boil down to a lot of what-ifs. What if Matt Canada got his way in 2017 and and Ed Ogeron said, okay, we'll start the kid? Maybe Joe Burrow never ends up here. What if he didn't get injured in 2020? Does Max Johnson or TJ Finley stay or do both leave after 2020? Does one of them stay, one of them leave? Is Brennan, does Brennan start 2020 and 2021? Does Brennan leave after 2020? Who knows? But there's so many what-ifs that you could play with that butterfly effect around Miles Brennan's career, and I understand why there's, there's always that curiosity because of the, the unknown. But Miles Brennan's a fan favorite. Y'all, a couple of weeks ago on this show, if you remember, we ran a poll, and the question was, who do you want to be the LSU starting quarterback? It wasn't who do you think, doesn't know who thinks best. It was who do you want to be the starting quarterback? And 50% of you, half, 5-0, 50% of you said Miles Brennan. Garrett Nussmeyer was next at 36%. He's the sentimental favorite. People wanted the storybook ending for Miles Brennan. And I understand that completely. But the reality is he got dealt a heavy dose of bad luck. 
and just wasn't good enough to overcome it when they had other competition behind him. It's not to say that he isn't a good player, couldn't have been a good player, but what this coaching staff wanted is not what he was able to do. That's an observation I've shared with you many times, and a lot of you push back against it, but you've seen the reality of it today. And the other thing I'll tell you is that this is why quarterbacks transfer. This is why guys typically don't stay. Not everybody gets the Matt Flynn dream storybook scenario where you wait five years, you finally get your chance, and you hoist a natty. That's the outlier. That's the exception. That's not the rule. And Miles Brennan learned that. I'm not saying he has any regrets. The guy won a national championship backing up Joe Burrow. He was a part of the greatest college football team ever. He got to represent the state of Louisiana and LSU as a quarterback and is a beloved figure and will forever be someone that people respect a lot associated with this program. He never got to be the starting quarterback for a full season to see what that may look like, and that stinks. I wish it would have happened for him and for everyone to be, have the opportunity to see him do that. But ultimately, when you wonder why guys decide to transfer, this is why. And it's why you shouldn't criticize young men or women in whatever sport when they have the opportunity to do that, to seek a better opportunity for themselves. So Miles Brennan is done with football. For LSU, they move forward. Garrett Nussmeyer, Jaden Daniels, Walker Howard, three scholarship quarterbacks left on the roster. The Tigers will have a scrimmage in Tiger Stadium on Wednesday, which is scheduled to be completely open to the media in its entirety. At that point, we should have a much better idea about what direction this offense is going to go with either Nussmeyer, Daniels, or maybe both as they head toward the season opener against Florida State. All right, it's after further review. Uh, if you want to react, you're certainly welcome to do that. You can always email me. You can tweet me. You can jump in the Bayou Ford YouTube chat, or you can text me uh, in the 225 at 396-4400, 396-4400. I'm not got a quick break. Come back. I'll give you my other practice observations from today out at LSU. Stick around. AFR. Brought to you by Insurance Network of Louisiana. Better coverage for less money. You know the drill. Give them a shout. 293-0450. 293-0450. Seriously, get your phone right now. 293-0450. Tell Siri. I'll do it for you. Hey, Siri, call 293-0450. Boom. A lot of your phones are ringing right now. You're welcome. Insurance Network of Louisiana. Better coverage for less money. Stop overpaying to be underinsured. Have one conversation. Adam or Jay or anybody in the office over at Insurance Network of Louisiana and let them shop independently for free to get you better coverage for less money. Stop overpaying to be underinsured. We're all looking for ways right now to help save money, to fight against inflation. This is one way to do it, by paying less for your insurance. And they make it happen every single day right here. It's Insurance Network of Louisiana, 293-0450, 293-0450, or lainsurance.net. Bayou Ford has $14,000 off MSRP on a new 2021 Ford F-150. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile powertrain warranty and free delivery. If you need sales or service, the crew at Bayou is going to do right by you. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our experience. Have that. Is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. This is a follow-up appointment. This is a diabetes checkup. It's more advanced care. This is innovating health care at Louisiana's number one hospital, Auctioner. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further like vans customized for work or play with safety and tech to keep you connected supported by a five-star sales service and finance team and backed by the one star you know so go the extra mile it's never crowded 
Mercedes-Benz vans. Crime has serious consequences, but anyone can make a mistake. If you find yourself in trouble with the law, know that you have... Lucy Brown are here to protect you and your rights. Felony or misdemeanor, DUI or drug charge, no matter what crime you're accused of, Call 225-343-1111. Le posso offrire un caffè? Non c'è. Call Mr. Electric today for electrical repairs up. This summer, meet Acura's heroes. Available at the Acura Summer of Performance. This summer, visit your local Acura dealer for attractive... After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Relief Windows, Windows, Doors, Siding, call 288-8138 or visit ReliefWindows.com. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria. I'd appreciate you for being there. If you're watching on uh, YouTube, do us a favor, smash that like button and uh, subscribe up to the Watch 104.5 ESPN YouTube channel whenever we go live. It's where we go live. All of our daily shows, whiskey and wine, scone and tea. Uh, everything. So we appreciate you for uh, for being there. Um, I got a text in the uh, in the break from a chip major. You can always text us 225-396-4400, 396-4400. He said, so why did Miles just transfer? Why just quit? Uh, I kind of went through that. Something that, you know, you ask people around the program, they know and they understand it's that football wasn't Miles Brennan's first love. And that's okay. Like, he... You know, after 2019, of course, when Joe Burrow was off to the to the national, there were a lot of people around the program who uh, who kind of consulted with with Miles Brennan and said, "Listen, man, like lo- really lock in for 18 months, man." Just lock in as the starting quarterback for LSU for two seasons, and you have all this whole NFL future ahead of you. Like, really just put all the other stuff aside. And he just, he, he just didn't. That, that's okay. Because I don't at all want any, there to be any confusion whatsoever It's just known that this is a guy who loves fishing before fall camp. Joe Burrow would have been in the frigging looking at film every day. I mean, it just guys have everyone has different interests, and and so if you're not the year player, where you're the third quarterback of a new coach. You're now recently and start over in a system, different coach, play football to maybe have a shot, to maybe get a shot at the NFL, or do you want to move on with your life? And that's that's what he's chosen, and and that's that's okay um, for him, for me, for anybody. Like I think everyone should should probably just understand and, and respect that. So for LSU now. They move forward. A practice today was open to the media for about 30 minutes. We obviously saw individual period whenever um, when we first went in there. Uh, n- not a whole lot to, to note uh, initially. Uh, the running backs were hitting the sleds. The quarterbacks uh, were working on handoffs out of the shotgun. As I mentioned, it was Daniels, Nussmeyer, Howard, and um, I keep just saying the walk-on. It's number 16. He's uh, George Hamsley. Uh, shout out to George Hamsley, 6'5", 195, 
a redshirt freshman from Memphis. So that's number 16, George Amsley. Um, the um, they, the uh, offense was running a two-minute drill, which they do against air, as we've seen, to start the team periods, or to start the individual periods, rather. So I've kind of explained this before where there's you know, there's four fields, really. Um, we walk in, just just think of think of it like a giant, think of the practice facility like a giant rectangle. Two fields side by side and on top of each other. So like a giant rectangle with four full length fields. So we're like at the bottom right corner as we walk in, and the complete opposite end of the opposite field, like two hundred yards away on an angle, is where they, they start this drill. So they run, they run it with the first offense against air. Daniels was the first quarterback, and he would lead them in the two-minute drill to about midfield, and then Nussmeyer jumped in. And so they would finish the drive with the rest of the first team, and then they'd go back and run the second team. Daniels was first. He'd lead them to about midfield, and Walker Howard jumped in and led the drive the rest of the way. Your first team offensive line remains the same. It seems like that's solidified at this point. I, I don't, barring injury, which knock on wood, nobody wants to see. It seems like that's going to be your your line, the one they've been using from left to right, which is Will Campbell, Tremont Shorts, Garrett Dellinger, at center. Who, by the way, as we've watched, I have not seen a single issue with the snap. It's not to say when they go to team periods that hasn't happened. Don't know. I'm just telling you from what we've seen. I've not seen a single issue with the snap from Garrett Dellinger, other than the one in the rain the other day. So. That's a great sign. Uh, Miles Frazier at right guard and uh, an Anthony Bradford at right tackle. Uh, today, it was uh, Cole Taylor as the first tight end. Um, your, your first receivers were uh, Kayshawn Booty, uh, Malik Neighbors, and Brian Thomas Jr. We also saw, um, again, this was against air. This was the drill. This was the two-minute drill against air. We saw Mason Taylor go in second at tight end, and uh, Noah Kane was actually your first running back uh, during during that drill. Now, they came together and did a full offense uh, offensive session later, and we saw a little bit of rotation there where we did see stores come in there and um, uh, at, at, at tight end with Taylor. And so we got to see a lot of um, uh, a little more variety there. Um, other notes, defense, uh, we did – we continue to see – y'all, we continue to see – uh, Colby Richardson as um, running first-team cornerback. I, I'm not telling you that, that that's set in stone. We see all these guys rotating quite a bit, but we have seen Colby Richardson now run first-team cornerback, which has been kind of impressive to see. So uh, today it was Colby Richardson and Jark Bernard Converse, and your safeties were Jay Ward and Major Burns, who continues to be back there. Good to see Major Burns coming back from injury. Um, when the offense was out there, during their uh, their offensive period against against a scout defense, but no contact. Uh, it was that starting unit that I mentioned, and we got to see um, Stores and Taylor run primarily at the tight ends with the first group, and we saw both Daniels and Nussmeyer rotate with the ones. When they went to the twos, Walker Howard came in. So that was sort of the, the notable difference. Daniels and Nussmeyer, Nussmeyer and Daniels were taking reps with the ones, and when, they, when Denbrock called for the twos, it was Walker Howard who went in with the twos, obviously where, where Miles Brennan would have been uh, had he been out there. Um, quarterbacks, one of the interesting things that the quarterbacks are, like it is just so very clear, Joe Sloan is um, is very, very, very focused on, um, uh, Joe Sloan is very focused on accuracy. It's a big thing for Joe Sloan. A every day, and we're sort of kind of, you know, getting a, a rhythm of how they're running practices and when they go out there and start, um, the quarterbacks start in the individual period, the first thing they do is some type of accuracy drill. Uh, last week, they brought out like the, the target bucket, and they were moving on different uh, spots of the field and had to throw it into the bucket. Uh, today, they did a, <laughs> it was an interesting drill where they were, uh, they were on the, the end line of, the, of the, the back of the end zone, and they were throwing back onto the field, but they were wide of the goalpost. So they had to go inside of the upright and over the crossbar, but they couldn't lob it. I mean, they had to hit a spot. So he, you know, so, and Sloan was on them to make sure that you know, if they, if they had a bad ball, it was do it again. But um, it was really interesting to see. I mean, he is hyper-focused on accuracy with these drills as they start. Um, they're running a ton of zone read. Uh, I, by the way, I will tell you just my opinion, and I'm not like charting, every throw or anything like that. But watching these guys do these drills, Walker Howard throws the best ball of all of them. And that includes when Miles was there as well. I mean, he, he 
I, I'm not telling you from a scouting perspective or anything. I don't know. I'm just telling you when you watch it, it just looks different coming out of his hand. He's got a, a quick release. He's accurate. He's strong arm. Like he is going to be a lot of fun to watch uh, as he as he moves along. Um, uh, Chris Hilton was back today. He had been missing some time. There was no uh, initially no Besh or Landon Ibietta both were out there. Besh came later and was doing some work on the side. And I did watch the place kickers today. Both uh, Mata and Debert. Uh, both are left-footed. I didn't know that. Um, and Mata looked more consistent. Not to say that that I was, again, I wasn't charting how, how many makes or misses. And to keep in mind, like, from where we could watch, I was at least 100 yards away from him. So they were probably kicking somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 to 50 yards, you know, in that range, uh, moving from hash to hash. And um, <laughs> the only one that really stood out was Debert hooked one about 15 yards wide of the goalpost. I mean, you would probably expect from a freshman to have those types of moments. But uh, Mata, it, Mata wears 39. Uh, yeah, Mata is in 39. Um, and Debert, I think, is wearing 31. Yeah, 31 is Debert. So um, I don't know that there's any great separation, but if you hook one 15 yards wide of the upright, it's probably not a great thing. So I would probably think Mata is the one who maybe has a little nose ahead early, but we'll see how that all transpires. So just a, a couple of notes from uh, Monday's practice during the media availability. Wednesday, they have a scrimmage in Tiger Stadium, and the plan is for Brian Kelly to have the entire scrimmage open to the media, which would be pretty incredible to get to get to watch him scrimmage, uh, which I've never done in my career uh, covering this team since 2007. So it would be really cool to be in Tiger Stadium and watch him scrimmage and get a much better sense of where things stand with all these position groups that we're, that we're talking about here. All right, it's after further review. Uh, we're glad to have you aboard with us here. Monday shows are brought to you by Relief Windows and ReliefWindows.com. 288-8138 for Relief Windows and ReliefWindows.com. Uh, I'll knock out a quick break. We'll come back. We'll go around the SEC. Again, get in your calls, texts, emails, tweets, lots of ways if you want to get involved. Please feel free to do that. Take a lot of reaction today from uh, Miles Brennan ending his career. It really is a landmark day. I mean, Miles Brennan has been part of our uh, awareness around LSU football since 2016, when he committed to LSU. So you're talking about you know, six years plus of, uh, of Miles Brennan kind of being a part of our lives. So um, we'll take a lot of uh, reaction to that today, so feel free to get it in. Okay, it's after further review. Quick break, and we'll update Alvin Kamara's status in a moment. Stay here. AFR. Last week, with some of that bad weather that came through, our power went out again. Hey, it's crazy. I don't know if I'm on some kind of weird grid or whatever, but we lose power all the time. But the peace of mind that I have now is I never have to worry about it again because we installed a home standby generator from Shoots Electric. Our Generac, when the power goes out, boom, it instantly powers on and powers everything, the whole house, not just some appliances, the whole house as if the power never went out. It's incredible peace of mind to know that whether I'm home or I'm not home, if Erica's home with Drew, I never have to worry about the power going out ever again. It's a decision I wish I'd made literally years ago. I think you will be floored at how affordable a home standby generator is, and also the level of customer service that Shoots Electric provides. Get a free estimate. Financing is available as well. They handle everything. Dealing with the power company, the city, all the permits, everything. Shoots Electric. CESofLA.com. CESofLA.com. Follow us on Twitter at 1045ESPN to cast your vote in the Citizens Bank and Trust poll of the day. Vote daily inside Off the Bench, Hunt and Hill, The Early Line. And after further review, Citizens Bank and Trust brings you the poll of the day via Twitter at 1045ESPN. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly Are you a licensed contractor? There's lots of good contractors in Louisiana doing work the right way. ...are working outside the licensing requirements. Working as a contractor in Louisiana requires a license for the company doing the work. The Louisiana State Licensing Board for Contractors wants to help you get licensed. 
It's not difficult to get the license. We can help you. Go to LAContractor.org for more information. Licensed contractors, it's the law. This isn't just another day. It's so much more. Kelly's life was put on hold when her auctioner primary care doctor discovered a rare blood disorder. Her doctor connected her to an auctioner care team of cancer, heart, and kidney specialists. With multiple primary care locations around Baton Rouge, same-day appointments, and online scheduling, we're relentless about keeping you healthy. Auctioner Baton Rouge, innovating healthcare for Kelly. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance with the latest in office technology. From desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. Service Mastery Elite create clean, disinfected work environments. As a local business, we take pride in serving the New Orleans and Baton Rouge areas. Our cleaning protocols follow CDC and OSHA standards for healthcare settings, offices, senior living, restaurants, and industrial plants. Contact Service Mastery Elite to get your operation ready for reopening with germ disinfection cleaning. Service Mastery Elite, the trusted choice in professional. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Relief Windows, Windows, Doors, Siding, call 288-8138 or visit ReliefWindows.com. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria. Football season is just around the corner. Get ready to make your picks for this year's 104.5 ESPN Twin Peaks College Football Pick'em. Register now at 104.5ESPN.com. Weekly winners will receive a $50 Twin Peaks gift card, and the first place season-long champion will receive a 75-inch 4K flat-screen TV. It's the 2022-1045 ESPN Twin Peaks College Football Pick'em. Uh, hey, Muse. Hey, Scott. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm good, man. Good. good. Hey, you remember on Friday, there was a, a guy who reported that Alvin Kamara's suspension was likely to be in 2023 instead of 2022. I do remember that. Do you remember his name? Um, Balco Balco, right? Ooh, yeah. I totally forgot. Michael? Um, was it Michael? Michael. Oh. Look at that. I, co- Give I, myself had, a ding. I had to go cross-check <laughs> my retweets. To remember this guy's name, Michael Balco Balco. Don't B A L K O. Uh, he is. Um, he's got a blue check mark. Uh, he's got eight thousand followers on Twitter. Uh, he said, uh, sports journalist, podcast host, featured on ESPN Rivals USA Today, and a contributor at Who Dat Dish. No idea. Ricky Jackson follows him. That's pretty cool. I have Ricky Jackson follows a lot of people though. But uh, anyway, Michael Balco Balco on Friday reported. A suspension for Saints running back Alvin Kamara is more likely to occur in 2023 rather than 2022 per multiple sources. That was Balco Balco on Friday. And my point on Friday was, I hope to goodness gracious that this is an accurate report. I typically would wait to say see it from Schefter or Rappaport or Nick Underhill, the people who typically break news around either the NFL or the Saints, right? The that's what they do. I mean, they develop those relationships to be the breaking news people. So when random guy from this podcast breaks news, but you cite sources, but he's got a blue check mark, and you hope that he's right, but maybe not, and you have a little grain of salt with it because you're not sure if he's true. But, of course, I want it to be the reality because I want Alvin Kamara to play this season, given the Saints a lot at running back. Well, guess what happened today? Uh, on the fantasy field pass... Here was Adam Schefter. I think the league is going to be looking into this, but it's going to be a little while, it seems, before this legal case is settled. So if we're talking about Alvin Kamara from a fantasy standpoint, there's a real chance, Field, that the status of that case is not going to affect his availability this season. Mm. Now, at some point in time, depending on what the investigation shows, yes, he could be disciplined. But in terms of 
this season, it looks more and more unlikely that it's going to be the season. His attorneys keep pushing out the case. It keeps being pushed back. And by the time that there's resolution to it, this season may well be underway and Alvin Kamara may be on the field for the majority, if not all, of this season. Well, that would be just fantastic news if, in fact, it did transpire that way. Um, and again, I've made the comp to a year ago where we looked at cornerback. Lattimore, we thought, was going to be suspended, and you had lost Jackrabbit to a cap casualty, and so and, and then P-Rob retires, and we're going, who the hell is going to play cornerback? Well, look at what transpired. They traded for Bradley Roby. Lattimore never suspended. Adebo ends up being awesome, and now that's a strength of the team. I kind of look at running back and, you know, fingers crossed, knock on for Mike, I hope the same thing. Kamara, if he doesn't face suspension this year, he could be your lead guy, stay healthy. Maybe Mark Ingram drinks from the fountain of youth a little bit. If one of these other guys, if it's Dwayne Washington, Tony Jones Jr., Abram Smith, kind of comes up maybe as a third running back, that would be awesome to see. Uh, by the way, here was Dennis Allen after the Saturday game against the Texans on the running backs. I thought they ran the ball hard. You know, again, we'll look at the tape to see, you know, exactly, you know, how they read it. But I felt like they ran the ball hard. You know, obviously, we got to protect the ball better. You know, we had the ball on the ground a couple of times for the running back position. So, we got to do a better job there. So, um, the, the fumble by Abram Smith was just the most brutal part of the game. I mean, the Saints are up. It's preseason. It, the win or loss is, is largely irrelevant. But what does matter is you're trying to ice a football game and a guy trying to make the team fumbles at the three-yard line. That, that's, just, that's very disappointing. So, uh, another opportunity. Saints are on the road uh, today up to Green Bay. They'll have joint practice with the Packers. They'll have the second preseason game this weekend against Green Bay in Green Bay at Lambeau. We'll talk plenty about it. Matty Hudak will be here in about 20 minutes with some observations from the preseason game as well. Okay, do it every day about this time. Let's go around the SEC. Around the SEC, presented by Gulf Coast Office Products, excellence in imaging solutions. The Kentucky Wildcats. For the first time since 1978, Kentucky Wildcats are ranked in the preseason top 25. How about that? It's been almost 50 years. Uh, Kentucky's uh, ended last year at number 15 in the coaches poll, 18 in the AP. And uh, today they are number 20 in the preseason Associated Press poll. Um, also finished to pick second in the East. Bob Stoops, excuse me. Mark Stoops, wrong Stoops, uh, needs just two wins to surpass Bear Bryant as Kentucky's all-time winningest coach. The South Carolina Gamecocks. Carolina running back Marshawn Lloyd is uh, not quite 100% right now. Said uh, he sprained his foot but called it a minor sprain. Lloyd and Christian Beal Smith were both sidelined for the scrimmage on Saturday. You might remember before the start of Lloyd's first season, he tore his ACL, missed the entire year before returning last year, now dealing with a foot injury. The Mississippi State Bulldogs. Well, this is pretty cool. Mississippi State is going to wear throwback uniforms on September the 24th against Bowling Green, and they're going to be uh, uniforms paying homage to Robert Bell and Frank Dowsing, who became the first black football players at Mississippi State uh, back in 1969. It's a pretty cool uniform. It's actually the practice back in that season. So they'll wear those 50 years after these two men broke the color barrier at Mississippi State. Uh, the two men had previously been honored uh, with the uh, North End Zone Plaza outside of Davis Wade Stadium being renamed for them in uh, 2017. The Florida Gators. Florida got its first 2024 commitment over the weekend. Miles Graham, a four-star linebacker out of Atlanta, GA. He picked the Gators, a 6'1", 200-pounder. For 2024. The Arkansas Tour, they defeated the Bakken. Monday in Como, Italy. Way for your Arkansas with 28. It's really all right. There you have it. That is around the S. Shout out to our guy Trey. And a G C O P. Um.
has released a issue as a we will read my is back to go enjoy the tradition DraftKings Sports five dollars on any team win or lose that's not enough of course same game parlay money you can win so college bet and get two promo code 21 and older, physically present in Louisiana. Availability varies by parish. Eligibility restrictions apply. Like Charles, gambling problem, call 1877 stop. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're attention to detail. Have years and years of but many makes Luba a bit different is the way that to depend on us. Pearl Oyster Bar. Enjoy oysters from all Don't forget our nightly drink special. Located in downtown Baton Rouge. Giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenge. You, our mobile banking app is a smart. That cares about you. Seltzer with antioxidants. It's a beer seltzer game. Vehicle from Corval Toyota in Opelousa. It's an easy process. Decision now or reserve your in Opelousa. That's Happy Town. Eli's always been into grilling. It took us a while to see it. What are you doing, Eli? I have been talking about it throughout my career. Com, it performed. Oh, my boys. Barbecue guys, for those who were born to grill. You want cheese on your burger pops? I'll take a little cheese. follow-up appointment. Diabetes checkup. This isn't just more convenient care. It's more advanced care. This is innovating health care at Louisiana's number one hospital, Auctioner. Crime has serious consequences, but anyone can make a mistake. If you find yourself in trouble with the law, Know that you have rights, and it's okay to demand them. The law offices of O.C. Brown are here to protect you and your rights. Felony or misdemeanor, DUI or drug charge, no matter what crime you're accused of, you still have rights. Let the law offices of O.C. Brown uphold them. Call 225-343-1111, your law firm for a lifetime. 
This summer, meet Acura's heroes of performance. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Relief Windows, Windows Doors Siding, call 288-8138 or visit reliefwindows.com. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria. A Miles Brennan uh, today made it official. He is walking away from the game of football. Brennan has released a statement. I'll run through that here in just a quick second. Um, but when he was introduced... Uh, this is what Brian Kelly had to say during his media availability about Miles Brennan after Brennan rejoined the LSU football program. Well, I think that was part of the reason that he shared with me that he decided to come back. I, I think that, um, you know, he, he wanted to be in a system where the head coach was involved with the quarterbacks. Part of the system is certainly quarterback friendly uh the head coach is involved in it i think that had a lot to do with it and you know he's a he's a tiger you know i mean he loves lsu and you know you can see he's 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 in so much better shape he's physically in a good spot mentally he's in a good spot and you know he's a he's a veteran and that is such a a a great commodity to have in college football today he's in great shape he's in a great mental space a veteran you, you hear all those things and you wonder, well, what changed? Well, what changed is LSU added Jaden Daniels. They added a quarterback that's got 30 starts under their under his belt. It gave them the flexibility to play Daniels and Nussmeyer and to have what they wanted, which is a more versatile dual-threat quarterback. So it just it became very apparent that unless Miles did something spectacular, he was not going to be able to beat out those other two guys, and that's basically why we are where we are today with Miles Brennan stepping away from football. Uh, just minutes ago, Miles Brennan, via all his social media channels, did release a statement. Um, I, I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead and read. It's not too long. I'll, I'll read it to you uh, because I know there's a lot of people on you know on the road driving home from work right now who um, who may not have the benefit of of seeing it. So Miles Brennan wrote, uh, "Tiger Nation." Over the last five years, I've given. All of my body, heart, and soul to LSU football. Playing for LSU has been a dream come true. Wearing the purple and gold, running into Death Valley, winning a national championship, and starting a quarterback for the LSU Tigers, what more could a kid ask for? I will never forget the time I've spent and the memories I've made here. To the players who have suited up alongside me, to the coaches who recruited, signed, and developed me, to the training staff who cared for me, to the support staff who provided everything I needed to compete at the highest level and continue my education, and to the fans who cheered for me every step of the way, thank you. I want to say thank you to the student body, the administration, the entire LSU fan base for all of your tremendous support over the last five years. I will never forget my time in Baton Rouge. I love LSU and all of our fans. I am forever grateful for the opportunity I've been given, every obstacle I've overcome, and every second I've been a Tiger. However, after five seasons, it's time for me to start a new chapter in my life. I'm announcing today that I'll be stepping away from football, I'm thankful for where this journey has taken me so far and looking forward to where it takes me next, Miles Brennan. So that's the statement from Miles Brennan officially announcing that he is stepping away from football. And you understand a lot of of the why sort of baked in there, which is when he says, I get, I've given all of my body, heart, and soul to LSU. Like All of that is very true, what he has given. And then when you start to really compile what he has been through during his time in Baton Rouge, my goodness, uh, I just saw a tweet from Shea Dixon who who quantified all of it because I shared earlier three head coaches, and then if you just look at the OCs, recruited by Cam Cameron, played under Matt Canada, Steve Ensminger, Jake Peets, and now obviously a new head coach, new offensive coordinator with Mike Denbrock and Brian Kelly. Uh, the other po- parts that Shea points out uh, – he competed against nine scholarship quarterbacks in six years. He was recruited by and on the team for three different head coaches, five different offensive coordinators, more than 1,100 passing yards, 11 touchdowns, three interceptions, and his only three starts, multiple season-ending injuries. He's retired from football. He's a national champion and SEC champion and LSU grad. That is a uh, that's a lifetime for many. And for Miles, he crammed it all into uh, – into five years in Baton Rouge. So it's on to what is next for Miles Brennan, which is very likely 
nothing to do with with football, but um, he'll have certainly a lot of fans. So the the obvious question is, where does LSU go from here now with Jaden Daniels and Garrett Nussmeyer? And I do want to unpack a little a little bit of that coming up in about twenty minutes. We're not going to break. Uh, get you caught up on national headlines from Sports Center when we come back. Uh, we will recap Saints Texans, the first preseason game of 2022 for New Orleans. Matty Hudak will join us for that. Um, and the AP Top 25 poll is out. Leah Van is a voter. She'll join us to start hour number three. So we'll get back to the Brennan conversation about 20 minutes from right now. We'll recap in Saints Texans when we come back right after Sports Center. Hour number two of AFR is coming up next. AFR. Brought to you by Michelle Weighing and Measurement, Michelle.com, Michelle.com. Locations all over. The United States of America. 29, as a matter of fact, 29 locations across 11 different states from the East Coast all the way to California, Oregon, and the West Coast, and points in between. If you weigh or measure something, they sell, service, rent the products you need, you use to weigh and measure. And of course, they can calibrate all of your devices, whether it's on site calibration or if you want to ship your devices to them, or you can call them up, they'll come pick them up for you. It's one of the things that makes you more efficient. It's Michelle Wang and Measurement celebrating 75 years in business, no matter what industry you might be in. Reliable scales and measurement equipment to help ensure quality control, diminish waste, increase efficiency. That's Michelle Wang and Measurement, and they are hiring. Learn more at Michelle.com. Hit the Careers tab. It's Michelle Wang and Measurement online, Michelle.com. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram has $12,000 off MSRP on all new 2022 Ram Black Widow trucks in stock. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile powertrain warranty and free delivery. If you need sales or service, the crew at Bayou is going to do right by you. Are you a licensed contractor? There's lots of good contractors in Louisiana doing work the right way, but unfortunately, too many unlicensed contractors are working outside the licensing requirements. Working as a contractor in Louisiana requires a license for the company doing the work. The Louisiana State Licensing Board for Contractors wants to help you get licensed to allow you to conduct work legally. It's not difficult to get the license. We can help you. Go to lacontractor.org for more information. Licensed contractors, it's the law. This isn't just another day, it's so much more. Kelly's life was put on hold when her auctioner primary care doctor discovered a rare blood disorder. Her doctor connected her to an auctioner care team of cancer, heart, and kidney specialists. With multiple primary care locations around Baton Rouge, same day appointments, and online scheduling, we're relentless about keeping you healthy. Auctioner Baton Rouge, innovating healthcare for Kelly. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance. With the latest in office technology, from desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. Service Mastery Elite create clean, disinfected work environments. As a local business, we take pride in serving the New Orleans and Baton Rouge areas. Our cleaning protocols follow CDC and OSHA standards for healthcare settings, offices, senior living, restaurants, and industrial plants. Contact Service Mastery Elite to get your operation ready for reopening with germ disinfection cleaning. Service Mastery Elite, the trusted choice in professional cleaning since 1996. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Light beer shouldn't taste like water. Miller Lite has more taste and only 96 calories. It's Miller time. This is SportsCenter. 
I'm Doug Brown. The Texas Rangers fire manager Chris Woodward today. The team is 51-63 and 63 after spending big in the offseason. Third base coach Tony Beasley is the interim manager for the rest of the year. The Yankees have lost 9 of 11. They're 8 and 15 since the All-Star break. They still have a 10-game lead in their division, but ESPN's Alex Rodriguez believes the Yankees got worse instead of better at the trade deadline. A lot of things that make you say, wonder, and when you talk to Yankee fans, they're furious, they're impatient, and they think this year's getting away. Alex Rodriguez on the K-Rod cast Sunday night on ESPN2. The Associated Press preseason college football poll is out. Alabama number one for the second year in a row and ninth time overall. Ohio State two, defending champ Georgia third, Clemson fourth, and Notre Dame fifth. NFL officials were told to watch carefully for illegal contact on quarterbacks this year. So far, it's working. ESPN's Kevin Seifert reports during the first preseason weekend, there were 15 flags for contact. The new Venture X card from Capital One. Earn 10x miles on hotels and rental cars and 5x miles on flights when you book through Capital One Travel, plus 2x miles on all other purchases. Capital One, what's in your wallet? Terms apply. See CapitalOne.com for details. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria. <laughs> Live from, from the Mercedes Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. Let's ride. Let's Hour two, off we go. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us. AFR presented by Relief Windows. I'm Matt. I am sweating. Paul O'Neill. They're chanting Paul O'Neill's name. You soup. And Mr. Toby Tom Blake. All right, we're here. Glad you are as well. Get out there and make it a good one. Gigantic story of the day. If you have not heard yet, uh, LSU quarterback Miles Brennan is calling it a career. He will not transfer. He is just ending his football career. Uh, so we have talked plenty about that in hour one. We will revisit it as well in about 15 minutes. What's next for LSU? With the room thinned by one, Daniels, Nussmeyer, Nussmeyer, Daniels. How does that all work out? What kind of timeline might LSU be looking at to name a starter? Uh, we'll delve into that. Uh, right now, the Saints uh, Saints had their uh, preseason opener on Saturday. They fall to the Houston Texans. Disappointing end of the ball game, but I feel like we learned a lot about this team. Matty Hudak is joining us throughout training camp for our Saints camp reports. Good enough to join us now uh, to recap the uh, preseason opener for the Saints. Matty, we appreciate it. How are you? I'm good. Uh, seeing just some illuminating things. Good and bad, bad on that Saints Hill. Yeah, it's um, – let's start defensively because I think everyone, when they've talked about this game, at least everyone I've spoken to, has started with Chase Hansen. And we've wondered if the Saints have or can develop good linebacker depth. He was obviously a standout. What should we take realistically from the day that uh, Chase Hansen had? We talked a couple times on the show, right, about with Pete Werner going down to the Saints have enough linebacker depth and – Caden Ellis has kind of been a fill-in in the past, but Chase Hansen, I mean, if you talk about someone that makes plays, he had four solo tackles, uh, five to buy, and uh, he's the only one on the team with a tackle for loss, and he had two for that matter, and an interception and a pass deflection. Was he out of place a little bit on one or two plays? Sure, but he's not your starter, and he really looks like one out there. And what really impressed me was his instincts and coverage, you know, kind of going sideline to sideline and really going back into the backfield uh, to, you know, wrap up those tackles for loss by running back, especially with the pass rush, not really getting to the quarterback and not really stopping anything in that aspect. It's nice to see a linebacker kind of tear into that backfield. And yeah, Maddie, for the majority of the day, the defense was pretty spectacular. Uh, what about in the secondary where the starters were obviously sitting? Who stood out mostly in the secondary to you? There's a lot of tandems that did really well together. You know, May and Williams started out, uh, and then it really turned to Williams and uh, JT Gray. What sticks out to me is that, you know, they have a run-stopping secondary, and that's 
not you know what you normally say first about a secondary, but they all really want to come down and stop the run and tear into that backfield. Justin Evans, uh, he's the one who looked the most fantastic to me. He spent time in the slot. He spent time at single high safety and just his kind of instincts back there, seeing a run play. And that's really where you see the difference this year in this safety group. You know, Marcus Williams offered so much in the passing game, but you didn't really seem to come downfield and just tear back there and wrap up someone for a tackle for a loss. Justin Evans did that multiple times. Uh, his interception, just his ability to t- kind of time that, he just really stood out to me. And then JT Gray is someone I brought up. He's never going to be, you know, that shiny name, but he had a lot of sideline plays. He had a, little, a lot of good plays in coverage and also a lot of run stops. So really it was kind of all around the board back there. And it's one of those things where if the starting tandem in some way goes down, there's so many pieces there and they can really communicate well, especially you can see that when they're in that split back, you know, um, split safety coming down to stop the run. What about the uh, what about the pass rush, Maddie? Anything stand out for you there? Jeff Driscoll is running around quite a bit, right? <laughs> uh, that was kind of the issue uh, last season, and you know you don't have your starting guys out there, but you're kind of hoping for something from guys like Kentavious Street, who they signed this off season, Jordan Jackson, who kind of showed up quite a bit uh, because we always talk about it with the depth on that line, and you know their Onyemata suspension last year. Was, could Shai Tuttle kind of step in? Uh, it just doesn't really seem to be that much of a difference from last year. The only standout, and he was really the consistent standout until he went down last year, uh, was Tano Passanian, who shows the ability to play, you know, as a tackle on the edge and just chase down plays with a lot of speed. There's one where he takes uh, drift a lot of bounds, and he was being double blocked, shed them both, and have the speed to get around them. But you know, he is not going to be the end all be all in the pass rush, so. There has to be someone, I think, that's Yamada or as a depth piece behind who would be Granderson or Jordan on the edge. Maddie Hudak is with us. She's on Twitter at Maddie Hudak underscore 94. That's M-A-D-D-Y-H-U-D-A-K. Um, all right, let's flip it over to the offense because that's probably what everybody wants to talk about anyway. Um, the, look, no Jameis, no Kamara, no Michael Thomas, no Jarvis, no problem. I mean, the first team offense went right down the field and scored. Um was there a big takeaway from the the ten play touchdown drive uh, to open the game for the Saints? Really, that if Jameis Winston goes down at any point in the season, this is probably the most comfortable backup situation. I, I think the Saints would say, you know, since Teddy Bridgewater went down there, you know, they were all uh, kind of always looking for that backup archetype behind Drew Brees. I know it's no longer his offense, but it's still P. Carmichael, and it's still you know that short intermediate passing game, getting the ball out to the flat. Dwayne Washington was really good in concert with Andy Dalton, but he just knows how to execute it back there. I mean, he was five for five. He kind of had a good sense of interior pressure when it was time to take off, and and he scrambled for about seven yards and knew how to slide, which is an important thing. But, you know, talk about getting the ball out quickly, the ball out in the flat, taking those check, check downs and those dump offs, never really trying to be the hero, but just really executing the system almost flawlessly. Uh, and it's one of those things that if he did have to go in for an extended period of time, there really, to me, is no issue at all, especially behind what I thought was a pretty well-executed starting offensive line. Credit to Andres Pete uh, in particular for that. Um, when does uh, Traquan Smith get cut? Uh, I mean, he and Ian Book are kind of holding hands, walking that way. Uh, he did not really help the case for himself or for Book, for that matter. Uh, I think, you know, we kind of be talking about Book a little bit differently if he, if Smith had at least caught that catchable touchdown pass in the end zone and maybe not, you know, punched the ball in the air for someone to intercept, but not to take, you know, all of the responsibility away from Book. But, you know, Smith, he's, he flashes in training camp, he flashes in practice, and then he gets hurt a lot. And that's not really, you know, something to come out and make a case for yourself. We all know he can block against the run, but, they have a lot of, at this point, really dangerous pass catchers. And Marquez Callaway at this point has both that durability and that consistency. So he really kind of needs that good game uh, next week. I mean, could they just cut him today? Uh, I mean, just to be, to be rid of like, I believe, like, you, you, I don't know if you'll learn, but I mean, I am, uh, I, I am, he is so dead to me on this day. I, I'm just, anyway. Um, look, a lot of conversation about Trevor Penning. And there was the pro football focus rating, which had him rated as the, the highest rated rookie week one of the preseason. 
but a lot of people saw the pressures that he gave up. So make sense of Trevor Penig's debut for us. It, it almost kind of is that idea on draft night where, you know, he was really raw and just kind of this aggressive, you know, a dog mentality type guy. You see that come out, come out in the fights during camp. So with someone like that, that's a little much, uh, kind of like an untamed stallion almost. Uh, he was kind of having issues with inside pressure and guys that were winning with speed. Uh, kind of getting that first step off the line is going to be really, really important because interior pressure is something in, if for guys that aren't really mobile in the pocket. Even for someone like Ian Book, who is kind of evasive back there, is it in the pocket for them at all? Whereas James Hurst, you know, at this point has been a little more consistent. But, I, you know, that's kind of the idea with someone that's kind of raw as a rookie is hopefully, you know, once he gets that technique down, he showed enough flashes and that aggression that should hopefully get more refined. Uh, but he's someone that I'm curious to see if he improves on those areas that were very clearly obvious struggles uh, on that edge. You know, one thing that I don't know that many people have talked about, though, Maddie, also you and I talked about last week, Will Lutz. Just seeing Will Lutz kick, kick in the game was pretty awesome as well. I mean, what a... a uh, I think you said last week you can't even you cannot overstate the importance of him from a year ago. It really is a sight for sore eyes. It's again just the given of oh well this is at least you know three points on this drive. That was really the issue last year was they almost have to score because they're probably not going to be able to convert two points. That was an issue. They're not having any luck kicking extra points or kicking three points. And the Saints a lot of the time in the past have won games just by making field goals on well timed drives. So just to almost have that given back there of it, you know, with the 40-yard field goal, no one's really thinking about it because it's Will Lutz and he's really back to full form, missing all but one kick all of camp. Hey, Maddie, before you go, um, running back is something that, I, look, I've focused on a lot here, um, even since before the draft. Uh, the Abram Smith fumble really stunk. But did um, was there anything among the, the three guys that we got to see that, that stood out for you? Well, Tony Jones Jr., he, he's really made a case for himself this offseason, right? I mean, he's really looked sharp in training camp, both, you know, in the run game and getting involved in the passing game. I think we brought up his wheel route touchdown a few weeks back. But he, people might not know that he played with Ian Damon, and you could really tell that they were kind of seamless communication with Book was in the game. But we're kind of always hoping for someone to have that archetype of Mark Ingram to kind of back him up and be that complement to the running style of someone like Alvin Kamara. And I think he had a couple runs up to six, despite being, you know, at that point on that O-line that wasn't really creating that strong of a pocket. At looking at a pause play right now, that's just slightly alarming. But Tony Jones found his way through and found his way through his power. So I think he's definitely one of those risers that is making a case to be on this uh, roster. Uh, she is Maddie Hudak on Twitter at Maddie Hudak, Hudak underscore 94. Saints traveling up to Green Bay today. They'll join practices with the Packers and then play this weekend. Anything in particular this week, Maddie, I'll put you on the spot, that uh, you maybe want to see come out of these joint practices with Green Bay, aside from just obviously staying healthy? I would like to say pass rush. That doesn't really happen in these kind of games. Uh, I think I need to see a little more from Ian Book just because Dalton is so locked up shut when there's no pass rush. And in book is still holding on to the ball too long in training camp. That's really, you know, an issue. So even though there's no pass rush in this practice, I really hope that he kind of comes on to his own. And I'll be curious to see, you know, how Penning kind of does against someone that's not his teammate that they're kind of been getting in everyone's face day in and day out and see if he kind of refines that inside himself. Matty Hudak, uh, Saints Insider, giving us our uh, Saints camp reports all throughout camp, recapping uh, Sunday, or excuse me, Saturday's uh, preseason opener against the Texans. Matty, we appreciate it. We'll talk again later. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. All right, be well. It is after further review. A Billy M. Body in 15 minutes from right now. Uh, we'll get Billy's thoughts on Miles Brennan, calling it a career, and also Kylan Jackson, safety out of Zachary, did in fact pick the Tigers over the weekend. So, Talk about this growing recruiting class for uh, 2023 for the Tigers. Glad you're aboard with us here. It's AFR. AFR. Love telling you about Clegg's Nursery. Uh, four locations in the greater Baton Rouge area. Segan near Airline, LA-16 in Denham, Mid-City on Donmore, and the Garden Center on Greenwell Springs. I tell you, buy local, shop local. And I had great news from Miss Teresa today over at Clegg. She said, look, Matt, it's fall. Uh, we're moving into fall, so it's time to start planting the fall vegetable garden. If you're a green thumb, you always wanted to plant a vegetable garden, this is the time. Clegg's is receiving new shipments 
of fall vegetable plants and Johnny Naylor seeds. Nothing beats fresh, homegrown flavor. That's a given. And it's also something really fun to do with the kids where the entire family can get involved. If you want to maybe do that this fall, great way to do it. Also, some new bedding plants are coming in with those fall colors. And for the hunters, Buck Buster's fall seed mix is in stock. It's time. Deer corn is here. You all know it's that time. Clegg's has it. Buy local, shop local. Go see our friends at Clegg's Nursery. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. It's no secret. The best oysters in Baton Rouge are at Jolie Pearl Oyster Bar. Enjoy mouth-watering South Louisiana flavor and oysters from all over the country. And don't forget our nightly drink specials. Jolie Pearl Oyster Bar, located in downtown Baton Rouge. And into grilling. It took us a while. What are you doing, Eli? I knew grilling was my thing. I am. Got the new grill from barbecueguys.com. It performed great. My advice, as I always told my boys, do more of what you're born to do. Barbecue Guys, for those who were born to grill. You want cheese on your burger, Pops? I'll take a little cheese. This is a house call. This is a follow-up appointment. This is a diabetes checkup. This isn't just more convenient care, it's more advanced care. This is innovating health care at Louisiana's number one hospital, Auctioner. Vizzy. The first hard seltzer with antioxidant vitamin C. It just hits different. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Relief Windows, Windows, Doors, Siding, call 288-8138 or visit reliefwindows.com. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria. I right, rolled along Billy and Body a little more than 10 minutes from right now. Kylan Jackson, the four-star safety out of Zachary, committed to LSU over the weekend. And uh, we'll also get Billy's thoughts on Miles Brennan. Uh, by now, I'm sure you know Miles Brennan uh, ended his um, his football career today. Uh, we got to watch practice this morning. The media did for about 30 minutes. And one of the first observations, obviously, was when everybody went to go look at the quarterbacks, number 15 wasn't there, uh, which led everyone to sort of assume what we all found out later. LSU released a statement announcing Miles Brennan was um, was stepping away from football. Brian Kelly tweeted, uh, a thank you to Miles Brennan, and just a short time ago, Miles Brennan himself uh, tweeted out a graphic and a, a note to uh, to LSU fans, and sort of a, a thank you and a, an official announcement that he is stepping away. 
The obvious question now becomes, what's next for LSU at quarterback? Without Miles Brennan, uh, the room has thinned, clearly. And it, it's not a great thing for depth. Of course, you'd love to have four scholarship quarterbacks, but now you don't have that luxury. And you know, you're one turned ankle away from being in the spot you were in back in 2018 when Lowell Narcisse and Justin McMillan transferred and you had Joe Burrow and then redshirt freshman Miles Brennan. So uh, it, that's, it, it's unenviable to be in a spot like that where you get thin at depth. I mean, you've gone from where a six-year player was running as your number three to you know, you're a turned ankle away from having a, a true freshman as your backup. Um, now, granted, he's a highly regarded prospect and a guy that I think Walker Howard is going to be exceptional here, but your, your depth is thinned out. That's an undeniable part of, what's, of, of this decision. Um, but a lot of people have asked about time frame and you know, when LSU might make a final decision on quarterback. And I, I will just continue to reference precedent which is why whenever we've talked about the quarterback situation all along, my feeling has been it's going to be Daniels or, or, or Nussmeyer. And I, I guess the, the feeling I had early was that it would be Daniels because he's the guy that they brought in when they didn't have to. And he kind of does the things that this head coach and offensive coordinator want the quarterback to do. And he's clearly the most experienced, having started you know 30 times in his career. But if, if you look at precedent, Brian Kelly was in the exact same situation a year ago. Uh, they had brought. They were replacing Ian Book, who was a four-year starter. They brought in Jack Cohn, uh, a transfer from Wisconsin, and they ultimately named their starting quarterback on August the 14th. They named Cohn the starter, by the way, on August the 14th. So, I, that, I mean, obviously today's the 15th. I'm not saying it's to the date, but the point being, you get to a certain point in camp where you have to make a determination as far as what you're going to do with reps. Ed Ogeron, for LSU fans, very famously had to do this in 2018. I just referenced Narcisse and McMillan. It was a couple of weeks into camp where they decided, look, we can't just keep giving everybody equal reps. We've got to move forward with the quarterback competition and who we think is going to be the guy so that way we can get that player ready to be the starting quarterback for the opener. And in that season, of course, they opened up in Jerry World against, against Miami. Oddly enough, wouldn't Miami rank 10th in the country in that game? Weren't, weren't they top 10 for that game? It's so bizarre to think. Well, anyway, I'm, I, I digress. But um, you're basically at that point now. You are a week and a half into camp. The reports are that Miles Brennan was told he was not going to be the starting quarterback. And, and that's why. And so those reps were going to be pared down. And that's why Miles Brennan chose now to, to walk away. Okay. So. You've thinned out that room. You know the reps are now going to go to to Brennan, or excuse me, to, to Nussmeyer and to Daniels. And now you have to figure out, okay, who's going to be your starter or are you going to try to proceed with two? Now, Brian Kelly said he's done the two-quarterback thing in the past, but it's not ideal. If you have two, the old adage, if you have two, you don't have one. LSU is going to have, is scheduled to have a full scrimmage inside of Tiger Stadium on Wednesday morning. And the media is allowed to watch the entirety of the scrimmage. Again, I'm I'm using deductive reasoning here. I'm, I'm not telling Brian Kelly hasn't been forthcoming about a specific date, you know, when he wants to name a starting quarterback or anything like that. Actually, Muse, can you please pull up Brian Kelly from last week when he was asked about that? Um, I believe it was on when we met with him on Wednesday after practice. He was asked about naming a starting quarterback and sort of the and sort of the timeline and giving up all, all those reps. But I guess my point is, we're going to see, provided they still let us go watch watch the scrimmage, but we're going to see on Wednesday who's running with the first team. We're going to see how they're divvying up reps. It's going to be clear Wednesday morning, like, who's the guy, or if they're just interchanging both Nussmeyer, Daniels, Daniels, Nussmeyer with the first team. So we're going to have a sense of where this is after Wednesday's scrimmage. So my guess is just following precedent with what Brian Kelly's done in the past, with with what he did a year ago, and what we've seen from other quarterback competitions like this in fall camp, 
this is about the time where you've got to move forward with whoever your guy is going to be. If you're going to commit to one. If you're going to commit to one guy, this is about the time where you got to do it. So Wednesday would make a lot of sense. If you're going to have a scrimmage, you're inviting the media to watch the scrimmage. We're all going to see what you're doing anyway. That's when it would really make sense to go ahead and, and name whoever your starter is going to be, provided you do it. Not every coach wants to name a starter. A lot of coaches wait, and you just find out when the first offense runs out there in the opener. But I'm, again, relying on precedent. Brian Kelly was in this situation a year ago at Notre Dame, and he named publicly a starting quarterback. I'll also point out that Brian Kelly has been unusually open. And we, we've, I know we've talked about it. It may not matter much to, to many of you, but it's the first time in a quarter century that practice has been open to the media to watch the entirety of the practice. That's not something Kelly did at Notre Dame, talking to people who covered him in South Bend. So whether he's just trying to start on a good foot here, whatever the case may be, uh, that's that's unorthodox for Brian Kelly. And it's also something that we're you know, getting accustomed to as well. Just But he's been open. I mean, he has been open and transparent and allowed us to watch practice and go in and see there and who's there and who's not there and answer questions about it. So my guess is he will name a starter. I think he will. And By the way, this is what Brian Kelly said on last Wednesday after the media got to watch the practice and he met with the media right after about um, about those quarterback reps and kind of getting closer to naming a starter. So you're not going to see much separation in the first seven days. That'll begin to start take shape and form uh, as we get into down and distance situations. So, for example, these first two days are really P and 10, meaning you're just dialing up, you know, every play that is not even a, a down and distance play. Practice three, we start to get into some second down. Um, practice four and five, you start to see a little bit of third down situations. And, and when we get into that sixth day, you'll start to see a little bit more third down and long, where now you can start to see some, some play calling that, that is going to be situated for you know the quarterbacks. So it's not going to be until that second kind of rack, if you will, that second week where we start to you know pin some plays on quarterbacks. And that's kind of where we are now. All right, it's after further review. We'll talk to Billy Embody, get his reaction. Miles Brennan stepping away, the quarterback battle, and also we'll talk about this recruiting class. Glad to have you aboard with us here. It's AFR. AFR. Brought to you by Darren James and Associates, powered by EXP Realty. Every home listed by every company all in one place. Agent225.com. Agent225.com. Remember, if you're buying or selling, if it's commercial or residential, you need Darren James. Because no realtor is going to work harder to get your home sold faster for more money and give you a better experience. I tell you all the time about it, but think about it. Darren has his lover to leave it program. You buy a home from Darren, if you have to move within a year for whatever reason, Darren will sell your home for free for his half of the commission. If at any point in the process, you're not thrilled with the work Darren's doing, no worries. Let you fire him free and clear. Let you out of the contract. But you won't. There's a reason Darren is on the Wall Street Journal's list of the top 1% of realtors in America because it doesn't matter if your house is $289,000 like that one in Zachary or $1.4 million like that one in Laurel Estates in Baton Rouge. Darren gets results. Call Darren James. Get your home sold. Think real estate. Think Darren James. Bayou Ford has $14,000 off MSRP on a new 2021 Ford F-150. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile powertrain warranty and free delivery. If you need sales or service, the crew at Bayou is going to do right by you. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Crime has serious consequences, but anyone can make a mistake. If you find yourself in trouble with the law, know that you have rights and it's okay to demand them. The law offices of O.C. Brown are here to protect you and your rights. Felony or misdemeanor, DUI or drug charge, no matter what crime you're accused of, you still have rights. Let the law offices of O.C. Brown uphold them. Call 225-343-1111, your law firm for a lifetime.
This summer, meet Acura's heroes of performance. Only available at the Acura Summer of Performance. This summer, visit your local Acura dealer for attractive offers on the MDX. Are you a licensed contractor? There's lots of good contractors in Louisiana doing work the right way, but unfortunately, too many unlicensed contractors are working outside the licensing requirements. Working as a contractor in Louisiana requires a license for the company doing the work. The Louisiana State Licensing Board for Contractors wants to help you get licensed to allow you to conduct work legally. It's not difficult to get the license. We can help you. Go to lacontractor.org for more information. Licensed contractors, it's the law. This isn't just another day, it's so much more. Kelly's life was put on hold when her auctioner primary care doctor discovered a rare blood disorder. Her doctor connected her to an auctioner care team of cancer, heart, and kidney specialists. With multiple primary care locations around Baton Rouge, same day appointments, and online scheduling, we're relentless about keeping you healthy. Auctioner Baton Rouge, innovating healthcare for Kelly. There's nothing better than tailgating, but it can be a lot of work. So why do it yourself when you don't have to? Let Revelry Sports and Entertainment set up your luxury tailgate on campus. Order what you want and just show up to party. Book your tailgate today at Revelry. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Relief Windows, Windows, Doors, Siding, call 288-8138 or visit reliefwindows.com. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria. That being said, for the next three to four years, I'll be... Uh, Kylan Jackson, the four-star safety out of Zachary over the weekend, uh, picked LSU and uh, becomes the third Baton Rouge prospect over the span of seven days uh, to pick the Tigers. Billy Embody from On3 Sports good enough to join us now, talk a little Cruton and uh, also uh, the really seismic shift today and big news out of LSU football. Billy, how are you, man? I'm doing well, Matt. How about you? I'm doing really well. Uh, let's start with the recruiting stuff. We'll circle around to Miles Brennan at the end. So, uh, Kylan Jackson picks LSU. How significant is this? This is a significant land. I mean, you look at the last week for LSU, like you alluded to. I mean, Shelton Sampson, um, Ricky Collins, and and now Kylan Jackson. And that's not even counting, you know, Kai Prion uh, announcing that he's going to make his commitment uh, on Tuesday night. And he's another, you know, somewhat area local-ish prospect uh, that LSU sits in a really good spot for. So this is just kind of the continuation of that trend that we saw uh, as of late, you know, with LSU in Louisiana uh, starting to really hone in on the guys that uh, they feel good about and, and, and get them on board before their senior years. Um, and so Colin Jackson is, is a big one because he's, he's very different than the defensive backs than that they already have committed. He's much more of a kind of a in the box guy, uh, very physical. Um, you know, Sam Spiegelman, our, our national analyst, you know, kind of compared him a little bit to, to the way Grant Delpit, um, you know, is kind of used, uh, you know, with Dave Aranda when he was here. Um, but he's another big safety like that who could kind of come down into the box and you can use his versatility. And the rest of the guys they have is are, are, are very much, you know, more so coverage based players. Um, so this is a really big uh, recruiting win for LSU. Yet another win over Texas A&M this cycle as well. So um, LSU fans always love to uh, hear that, of course. Uh, and so, so this is a, this is a really really nice land to not necessarily cap summer because we still uh, have a couple more prospects who have announced their uh, you know intentions to make their commitments before their seasons, but. Uh, this is a really, really good one, uh, you know, to land out of out of Baton Rouge. Uh, Adams, Samson, Collins, now Jackson. Is it safe to say that the concerns 
over whether or not Brian Kelly and his staff would be able to recruit the state are should be officially alleviated? Yeah, I think I think for this cycle especially, um, they're they're really you know I, I think you could put those to rest. I mean, you know I don't like excuses no matter what, but um, you know the guys that didn't go LSU's way in that top ten range of of the you know top Louisiana recruits were guys that were kind of already trending away or you know, you already saw the writing on the wall for the most part, no matter if Ed Ogeron had been given another year or if they made a different hire um, or, or um, you know, if, if it's Brian Kelly, those guys were most likely going to go out of state. So um, you're seeing LSU capitalize on the guys that they felt good about. Um, they wanted to prioritize. And, you know, there is some wiggle room, let's say, uh, you know, this fall when they do some, some evals, that was one thing Brian Kelly mentioned uh, at SEC Media Days, kind of unprompted, that they want to make sure that they canvas the, the canvas the state and really make sure that they turn over every leaf looking at these players. You know, so does that mean that, you know, somewhat somebody or, or a couple prospects pick up offers late? Um, that could be the case. And uh, in that case, you know, you'd like to see, um, you know, them capitalize and be able to flip those players uh, to LSU as well. With Jackson, are they done in the secondary or do they have more work to do there? Uh, I don't necessarily want to put it as they have more work to do because they've got some really good talent committed, but um, they're certainly not giving up um, on, on defensive backs. They've got a trio of guys out of Texas that they're after, um, JV and Toviano, uh, um, Javon Thomas, and um, I am blanking on the last one for some reason. Oh, Bravion Rogers. Sorry, he just decommitted from A&M. Right. And so those go, those are three guys that they're on very very hard. They're all top 100 prospects. They're they're really really good players. And then you could kind of you know, maybe assess and see if somebody isn't up to snuff. But I do think they feel like they need to take a huge defensive back class. And all these guys kind of complement each other. They're all kind of versatile for the most part. Um, so I don't know if anyone's going to be necessarily chased off by you know adding another DB or two. Um, we just saw, obviously, I hate to do this just after uh, a player commits, but Jordan Matthews is a Baton Rouge uh, prospect in LSU legacy and somebody that I think, you know, after earning an offer this summer, they'd like to get him on board uh, if they can. So um, I don't think they're done with the secondary, and uh, I wouldn't blame them because I, I do think they need to really address that position. Uh, Matthews committed to Tennessee earlier today on uh, on Monday. Uh, Billy Embody's with us. What about um, Zalance Hurd? What's what what's the latest there? Yeah, Zalance Hearn just uh you know told uh Julie Baldwin of Rivals and then uh confirmed with me this morning that uh he's going to make his decision on September first. So he's been kind of telling everybody soon, soon, soon before the season or maybe into it. Um, but he settled on right before his season gets going really. Uh he's got a scrimmage this week, but but in terms of um, you know, he, early season commitments, he's gonna make that one and I really like where LSU stands. You know, I think they handled that recruitment great. Um, you know, he was somebody that they wanted to see a little bit of tape of, you know, playing offense tackle, see how he developed. And I mean, he, he just, he really looks the part. He looks the part of, of somebody that, you know, should play on Sundays eventually. And if he pans out, he's going to be one of the great ones, uh, no matter where he goes. But I, I think right now he, he certainly looks like somebody that's uh, probably going to commit to LSU on September 1st. It seems like uh, over at on three, um, shoot, I'm, I'm looking at his profile. You all have him at 97% probability to uh, to LSU in the prediction machine there. So um, it, what would have to happen for this not to go LSU's way? You know, I mean, I always like to say never say never in recruiting. I mean, we, yeah. we sat there saying, you know, how would Sage Ryan go anywhere but LSU? Um, and lo and behold, that week of his commitment when he decided to – actually commit he decided that he was going to commit to Alabama and LSU worked overtime on that one and obviously you know landed him but um this is one that sits in a really really good spot for LSU I'd be very surprised if it wasn't LSU when he did make the decision he did visit Florida and Florida State um last month and and Nebraska's uh had him on campus for official visit and of course Mickey Joseph is there but but it does seem like uh, uh right now all, all the signs are pointing to LSU Billy, is there any sense on numbers for this class, given the new rules with no hard cap at 25? How many players they'd like to bring in? Yeah, you know, the, the thing about it is is I don't necessarily have any 
idea because I think they're just going to kind of be patient. Um, you know, we kind of ran some numbers uh, doing the, doing some depth chart stuff um, and, and stories like that over the last week or so. And LSU, in terms of guys who were initial counters, whether it be from the portal or high school, they're at 66. Now, they're above that. I think they have, you know, guys that have gotten, you know, walk on, you know, awarded scholarships and things like that. But um, that's where we have the count, at least from initial counters. So they've got room and they could sign another big class. They, you know, whether it be a combo of high school or transfers or predominantly high school players. Uh, and if, and if some of these guys that are on their board, you know, come their way, I, I, I mean, I don't think they're going to turn them down. They, they seem to be shooting really high with the guys that are still on the board, um, kind of across, um, you know, all the different positions. So I would say if they get, you know, Kai and Zalance, that's 22, um, but, you know, they're, they're after Nicholas Harbor, a five-star defensive end, um, you know, tight end athlete, freak of nature. And then uh, Jordan Hall uh, is another big defensive tackle they're after. Um, you know, they would probably love to flip Derek Williams out of Westgate. You know, can those things happen? We'll see. Um, and then maybe, you know, a fifth offensive lineman, too. Uh, I know they would have three committed after uh, Tyree Adams, Lance Hurd, and, and Paul Mabenga, but D.J. Chester out of Georgia. Um, TJ Shanahan out of Texas. Uh, those are guys that they're on heavily. Um, so I, I could see it being anywhere 25 to 30, just high school players is, is my guess. But I, I think they're just going to kind of take um, what the you know high school ranks give them and then assess where they need to plug and play with some portal guys as well. Yeah, it's an important distinction. If they end up somewhere north of 25, and you're saying that's high school only, that's before you even talk about transfer. So so you're talking about a very big class. Just to make sure I understood, you said, based on your count, there's 66 initials as far as scholarship players on LSU's roster right now? No, so from, well, yes, guys from high school yeah, that initials. they signed. Absolutely. Or, yeah, yep, initials, yep, yep. That, so high school and, and transfer guys that's still that they've stu- signed. That's still a stunningly low number, Philly. Like, I mean, yeah, they, it's surprising, right? They, they just, that's very, I mean, they clearly have, a ton of room to put together a gigantic class here, just numbers wise, if they choose to do that. I, I don't know why they wouldn't. And you're obviously from that 66, you're going to lose guys either to the draft or to graduation. So you'll have even more space. That That's going to be fascinating to see just how big this class might get. Um, really, one of the guys they lost, obviously, is uh, is Miles Brennan. So that's uh, an initial and a roster spot that's open now as well. Uh, let me just get your reaction to, to Brennan's decision to step away. Yeah, it, it, it's it's kind of wild. Uh, I, I first started covering, and I was I was new to the beat that year, but started covering uh, Miles in August 2016. <laughs> that's that's how long it's uh, I've known him, and it, it's kind of wild, you know, after COVID and everything that's gone on with his career, whether it was his recruitment and the coaching change, or Joe Burrow coming in, and then coaching change and COVID and just all sorts of different things. I mean, what a ride i'm sure he has a, bu- a bunch of emotions about you know it, it, it being over um but you know just it, it's not surprising in a way because if he was running third then why would you kind of put yourself through that again um you know he just got engaged he's you know certainly somebody that i feel like could step right into the real world and be very successful um on on many different levels whether it's in baton rouge or just louisiana in general um so, you know, maybe it, it's the right time for him to do that. Um, but at the same token, I, I feel like he would have played this year in some way, you know, whether it be somehow it's clear he wasn't going to get the first snaps against Florida State. But, um, you know, who knows how Jaden Daniels would have done, you know, Garrett Nussmeyer, how he would have done, you know, maybe he would have played at some point. Um, I don't think that's out of the realm of possibilities. So I was a little surprised that he it actually – happened in that sense but um you know makes a lot of sense too uh, it, it's kind of a weird weird feeling you see you see a guy who's when he was healthy very 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 talented um very strong arm you know pro, you know could could move the offense but um just had a bunch of kind of things pop up whether it be getting behind one of the greatest of all time in joe burrow or um you know just being getting hit with the injury bug that kind of you know, held him back from probably accomplishing all the things 
uh, on a personal level that he thought he was going to at LSU. Obviously, he won a national championship in 2019. You have a feeling on Nussmeier Daniels? Um, I would probably just lean towards Jaden Daniels at, at this point, just because you. I, I don't think he, you know, was brought in necessarily to to sit. But at the same time, you know, everything's earned, you know, in this program. And I think that decision to, you know, have it, you know, be between Jaden Daniels and Garrett Nussmeyer makes that pretty clear. You know, because a lot of people, including myself at times, probably sat there and said, oh, Miles will get his shot. You know, he, he he came back, you know, to get that first snap against Florida State and show what he could do. And, you know, Brian Kelly convinced him and all that stuff. But, you know, you got to you got to earn it and show it. And um, I guess, uh, you know, I'm, I'm guessing here, but but I would probably guess Jaden Daniels is, is your starter. He's Billy Embody from On3 Sports on Twitter at Billy Embody. We appreciate it, man. Thanks so much. Hey, time, Matt. Thanks for having me. I mean, be well. We're brought to you by GMFS Mortgage, gmfsmortgage.com. Changing lives since 1999, billions of dollars in loans, hundreds of thousands of Louisiana residents served, no matter where you are in the state of Louisiana. Just log on to gmfsmortgage.com, gmfsmortgage.com. Hit the loan officers tab right there at the top of the page, and you'll find the local loan officer near you. They can help you the way they help me. If it's buying that home, if it's refinancing, if it's a cash out refinance, maybe take some of your home's equity to do a home improvement project. GMFS Mortgage can help with all of it. Home buy, refi, construction loans, it's GMFS Mortgage. Our state's largest local lender, number 11 in the country in USDA lenders. That's GMFS Mortgage. GMFS Mortgage, changing lives. All right, y'all, it's after further review. Uh, Muse is going to have Tigers and the Pros to wrap up hour number two. Coming up in just a second. And uh, Leah Van in about 15 minutes. Leah is uh, an AP voter. Today, the preseason AP Top 25 came out. Uh, LSU unranked for the first time since 20, uh, since 2000. No surprise. We kind of knew, especially after last week with the coaches poll. But uh, we'll talk to Leah about her vote, about what goes into the poll, some of the tough decisions she had to make. And uh, we'll get some camp observations from Leah as well as she's been out there on the beat um, covering LSU practice up until this point on what is a significant day uh, in LSU football history, as Miles Brennan has called it, a career. Tigers move forward with uh, Jaden Daniels, Garrett Nussmeyer, and Walker Howard as their three scholarship quarterbacks. Um, Muse, I'll have Tigers and the Pros to wrap up hour number two next. AFR. Monday at Pluckers, and what a day it is, because every Monday at Pluckers is all-you-can-eat wings. Nicholson, just south of campus. Blue Bonnet, right in front of the mall of Louisiana. Dine-in, carry-out, delivery via Uber Eats or DoorDash. But remember, if you're going to Pluckers on a Monday, you're going to Pluckers on a Monday because all-you-can-eat wings. Pay one low price and cram your face full of as many award-winning jumbo chicken wings as you could possibly stomach. That's at either Plucker's location. Of course, Major League Baseball, as we're barreling toward the postseason, you can watch all of your baseball action at Plucker's. Remember, always, football season is coming. Preseason action is here. You want to watch it, you could do so at Plucker's. Maybe there's some like really cool international thing that you love, like cricket. I Just say, can you put cricket on channel or on... TV 17, they'll have it. It's at Pluckers. Nicholson, Blue Bonnet. Dine in, carry out, or delivery tonight and every Monday. All you can eat wings. Pluckers, if you don't like our wings, we'll give you the bird. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. 
Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance with the latest in office technology. From desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. Service Mastery Elite create clean, disinfected work environments. As a local business, we take pride in serving the New Orleans and Baton Rouge area. Our cleaning protocols follow CDC and OSHA standards for healthcare settings, offices, senior living, restaurants, and industrial plants. Contact Service Mastery Elite to get your operation ready for reopening with germ disinfection cleaning. Service Mastery Elite, the trusted choice in professional cleaning since 1996. It's no secret, the best oysters in Baton Rouge are at Jolie Pearl Oyster Bar. Enjoy mouth-watering South Louisiana flavor and oysters from all over the country. And don't forget our nightly drink specials. Jolie Pearl Oyster Bar, located in downtown Baton Rouge. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Relief Windows, Windows, Doors, Siding, call 288-8138 or visit reliefwindows.com. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria. Wrapping up hour number two, glad you're with us. Uh, Leah Van coming up a little more than 10 minutes from right now. Uh, she's an AP uh, poll voter. We'll talk about her vote and also uh, some LSU camp uh, observations that's coming up right now. The Muso. Tigers in the pros. Tigers Drama. in the pros. They still bleed Dramatic. purple and gold. They're just really rich now. Presented by Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry. Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry, where Baton Rouge gets engaged. Joey B is back officially. Go to the Bengals social media today. They were posting a bunch of videos from practice. But. He officially made his return yesterday. You might remember, had his appendix out, recovered, was on a golf cart riding around camp at one point, returned last week, did some work off to the side, but now he's back. Did some seven-on-seven team work yesterday, more in strenuous than Zach Taylor anticipated. He was supposed to do two reps, Matt. Then Joey B did 10. Uh, That's because that's that's just just, what Joey B does. That's Joe, right? You want two, I'm giving you 10. Zach, stand, stand aside. He's back all as well. Parker Bug. Congrats hey! to Parker Bug. Little call-up action. He's with the big club now, the Miami Marlins. That move made official yesterday. Becomes the 83rd, 83rd LSU Tiger to play in the major leagues. The 25th player coach under Paul Maneri posted a 1.88 ERA, two starts in AAA before being called up. It was 17 games. And he's wearing number 87 with Miami. 87. That's a that's it's not a great number, I'll a, be honest. It's a tight end number. Yeah, that's 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 rough. That's rough. Here you go, Rook. Yeah. Congrats to Parker Bug though. Now the only one we got left is Cam. I know we've nailed a we lot. We nailed of them. the pre we nailed him this year. Josh Smith, Kramer, uh you Parker. said Parker. Who else are we missing? It was Cam. I think it was Cam. Cam was the only Cam, Cam Sanders, yeah. Oh Pat, Pat, Pat. Oh, yep. we did. We, we, we nailed them all. Four. We just got Get Cam Sanders a September call up. Yeah, the Cubs stink. The Cubs suck. They need him. Let's get it. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Give him a taste. Kevin Gosman last night uh, took the loss four and two thirds. Ah! Not no, no, well, no, 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 no. I said Josh Smith. No, okay. Okay. <laughs> Delayed. Nine hits, five earned <laughs> runs for Kevin Gosman. His record's now eight and nine. Alex Lang turned in a perfect inning of work, struck out one yesterday, 12 pitches, nine strikes. Alex Bregman. Two for four, another homer, his 16th of the season. Three RBI in the Astros' win yesterday. Average up to 258. Now for Alex Bregman, second homer in as many days. And then yesterday, 
Sylvia Fowles, her career, it came to an end. Ended with a double-double as the Lynx will not make the playoffs. How about this record? We already knew, already knew she was the uh, leading rebounder in WNBA history. Ended with over 4,000 rebounds. 4,006 rebounds, over 6,400 points. Finals, MVP, championships. Just a great career for Sylvia Fowles. And no, I was not prepared. Oh, are you kidding me? We're getting there. Hold on. We got time. You were kidding me? By the way, cool graphic that ESPN put up of Sylvia Fowles. She's like in a... She's on Big a... Sil. I mean, come on. She's on a throne wearing a crown, holding the WNBA ball, and all the, her accolades are there. It's pretty awesome. Awesome. That's Tigers in the pros. Presented by Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry, LMFJ.com. Maybe they can get uh, Sylvia Fowles like an all-time great ring from Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry. Hour three next. AFR. Brought to you by South Point Volkswagen, SouthPointVW.com. New and certified pre owned in Baton Rouge and online at SouthPointVW.com. SouthPointVW.com. Check them out online. Remember, if it's on the lot, it's online at SouthPointVW.com. Uh, Carrie over there, the certified pre owned manager, always shoots me some, uh, some great um, uh, inventory that they have. So you can get to the website if you're buying new, again, Always tell you about the great Volkswagen line, but if you're shopping for a pre-owned vehicle, you can go to the pre-owned lots. But remember, when South Point moves so much volume, people are often trading in their old vehicles, so their certified pre-owned selection is amazing. Not just Volkswagens. Yes, they have Volkswagens, but not just Volkswagens. You can search any make or model right there. Go to the website, southpointvw.com. You can get used vehicles at the top and search their certified pre-owned inventory as well. It's South Point Volkswagen, Louisiana's largest volume Volkswagen dealer. Airline just north of Highland or SouthPointVW.com. South Point Volkswagen. What's your direction? Dibs! 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 Kids have staked out their place at Auctioner Medical Complex, The Grove, where more than 30 pediatricians and pediatric specialists are all conveniently located under one roof, so you can spend less time driving and more time keeping your kids well. Dibs! It's no wonder kids call dibs at the Grove. Auctioner Health Center for Children. Follow us on Twitter at 1045BSPN to cast your vote in the Citizens Bank and Trust poll of the day. Vote daily inside Off the Bench, Hunt and Hill, The Early Line. And after further review, Citizens Bank and Trust brings you the poll of the day via Twitter at 1045BSPN. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram has $12,000 off MSRP on all new 2022 Ram Black Widow trucks in stock. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile powertrain warranty and free delivery. If you need sales or service, the crew at Bayou is going to do right by you. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Eli has always been into grilling. It took us a while to see it, but the signs were there. What are you doing, Eli? I knew grilling was my thing. I have been talking about it throughout my career. Happy with the results? I am. Got the new grill from barbecueguys.com. It performed great. My advice, as I always told my boys, do more of what you're born to do. Barbecue Guys, for those who were born to grill. You want cheese on your burger, Pops? I'll take a little cheese. Crime has serious consequences, but anyone can make a mistake. If you find yourself in trouble with the law, know that you have rights, and it's okay to demand them. The law offices of O.C. Brown are here to protect you and your rights. Felony or misdemeanor, DUI or drug charge, no matter what crime you're accused of, you still have rights. Let the law offices of O.C. Brown uphold them. Call 225-343-1111, your law firm for a lifetime. This summer, meet Acura's heroes of performance. Available at the Acura Summer of Performance. This summer, visit your local Acura dealer for attractive offers on the MDX.
This is SportsCenter. I'm Doug Brown. Chris Woodward is out as manager of the Texas Rangers in Woodward's fourth season. The team is 12 games under 500. Third base coach Tony Beasley takes over for the rest of this year. Dodgers right-hander Walker Bueller will have season-ending elbow surgery next week. He hasn't pitched for more than two months. He was 6-3 and three this season. During an interview with Fox 32 Chicago, Giannis Antetokounmpo of the Bucks says he might want to play for the Bulls someday. It's a team that, that won uh, multiple championships. It's a team that one of the greatest players, if not the greatest player, to ever play this game played for. So it's, 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 it's a no-brainer. Everybody would love to play for Chicago. Giannis points out, though, he's committed to Milwaukee. He has four years left on his contract. Hall of Fame basketball coach Pete Carrill, the creator of the Princeton offense, has died. He led the Tigers to 13 Ivy League titles and 11 NCAA tournaments. Pete Carrill was 92. World number 2 golfer Cameron Smith drops out of this week's BMW Championship. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. If you're a renter, make sure you're protected. Renter's insurance includes options that cover stolen property, personal injury, and living expenses if your place is damaged. Quote renter's insurance at Progressive.com. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. ESPN Baton Rouge. New Orleans, Alexandria, live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. Hour three, off we go. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us. AFR, presented by Relief Windows. I'm Matt. This is Shaq O'Neal, and I hate that. Paul O'Neal. They're chanting Paul O'Neal's name. Mm, you soup. And Mr. Toby Tom Blake. All right, we're here. Glad you are as well. Get out there and make it a good one. Five o'clock, quitting time. Glad you're driving home with us. Uh, If you're watching on the Watch 104.5 ESPN YouTube channel, thank you. Please smash the like button. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe up to the Watch 104.5 ESPN YouTube channel. It's how all of our shows go live, including Whiskey and Wine, Scone and Tea, and all of our weekday shows. Uh, Gigantic news around LSU today. Uh, Miles Brennan, after five years with the program, uh, was embarking on his sixth season as a Tiger, uh, has ended his LSU career. Was not at practice today, apparently after being told he would not be the starting quarterback and uh, decided that he would not pursue football any longer. He is stepping away. Uh, Lee Van, who also is an Associated Press poll voter, the AP Top 25 came out today. LSU not in the Top 25 uh, as they were not in the coaches poll a week ago. Uh, Lee is good enough to join us for a couple of minutes here. Leah, thanks. How are you? Good. How are you, Matt? Uh, I'm doing very well. Let me start with Brennan. I don't want to bury the lead. Um, your reaction whenever you we walked out to practice today and he wasn't there? I wasn't shocked at all, and I don't think anybody was, judging by what we've seen at practice. I mean, you've been there, too. Um, he was overthrowing a lot of guys, except for, you know, he had that one beautiful pass to Brian Thomas, but um, you know, he just seemed like he took a little bit too long in the pocket. And with a shaky offensive line, I knew that he probably wasn't going to win the starting job. And if you're a six-year senior and you're not going to win the starting job, then why stay? I at least thought, though, that he would be entering the transfer portal. I did not think he'd be ending his football career. Yeah. Um, Miles uh, steps away from football. It's an important uh, note there, as Leah mentioned. He's not pursuing a transfer. He's just finished with football altogether. We know he's recently engaged. So, uh, to whatever is next for Miles. Of course, we all wish him well. Um, AP Top 25 uh, was released today. LSU not in it, as we talked about with the coaches' poll, first time since uh, since 2000, LSU not ranked in the preseason. Uh, you did not have LSU in your Top 25, so why do you hate LSU? <laughs> well, uh, you could also say I hate my alma mater, Texas, <laughs> and I probably, you know... <laughs> But to me, like, I, you know, there are too many question marks with this team. And even as a beat writer, there are too many question marks. So I can't imagine how the other voters felt. But 
I also know a little bit too well that that offensive line is really going to determine the success of this team. And you've got a guy who's never played center before playing center. And we saw a couple of high snaps here and there today. We've seen a couple of high snaps in the previous practices. Of course, he has a while to brush that up. Um, and then you still don't really know who the quarterback's going to be. And the defense seems pretty solid and in place. And you've got good receivers, but running back by committee, I mean, whole new coaching staff. To me, it was just, I know they have the talent to do well, but they have too many question marks and they have a really tough schedule. Do you do you vote for, I've never voted, by the way, and quite honestly, I'm not sure if I would if even given the choice. Like, do you have the choice, by the way? <laughs> I'm serious. No, I'm being dead serious. Um, like, if someone said, would you like a vote? I don't know that I would take it. Yeah. So, basically, when I came down here last season, uh, there was an open vote because I guess somebody had switched uh, to a different publication or left. And they said, you know, we're trying to get more women to vote in the college football poll. And I was like, oh, okay. And they said, so do you want to vote? I was like, yeah. Oh, why not? <laughs> I've been, like, looking at this since my fourth, since like fourth grade. And they're like, just so you know, there's a reason why women don't vote in this poll, and it's because you're probably going to get attacked on Twitter since your uh, posts get sense. published. And I was like, oh, okay, well, that's fine. <laughs> How have your Twitter mentions been today? Today it's been really quiet. I think with pre being a preseason poll, it really is like, I mean – I mean, it really is a guessing game for all of us, right? Yeah. I mean, you saw somebody put Nebraska at number 25. At least I'm not that person. But, you know, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I mean, come on, right? Like, <laughs> come on. Just put somebody who's a little bit more, like, a little bit more respect respectable. Um, but, you know, I mean, it's been quiet today. Nobody's really said anything to me. Um, I, so I am curious, though. Like when you sit down to put together your top twenty-five, do you have an an a general approach to how you do it? Yeah. So uh, last season, um, I would look at the previous week, of course, and then go down the line and see how everybody did. I feel like that's the best like starting point. Um, and of course, if they lost, then you kind of look at like where you're going to drop them, and you know, kind of towards the beginning of the season when a lot of the teams don't have any losses and you have a team with a loss to like um, somebody who's like not ranked. You're like, well, they, you have to think of a compelling reason to keep them there. Right. Um, and I also would watch other games uh, when I'm not covering. So say if I'm covering a night game, I got to get there probably at four 30. If it's a six 30 game, I'm probably watching football games up until then to keep myself informed. So a lot of it is really, um, you know, who are they playing? Uh, how did they do the previous week? And uh, I test, too. I And I try to determine, like, the strength of the, the schedule they're playing. I was one of those people who voted for Michigan to still be ranked above Michigan State last year after they lost to Michigan State because I truly thought they were the better, more well-put-together team. Um, and I think it was a couple weeks later, and Michigan State had dropped another game. So, you know, it really is – I think everybody approaches it differently. It's kind of uh, – with the preseason, I looked at a lot of the other rankings and I saw Clemson was number four, and I was like, why is – why are we like, ranking Clemson number four? And then I, like, did some more research. I was like, okay, they have the top defensive line in the nation. They return a lot of experience. And I, quite frankly, don't know who else to put at number four. Yeah. Um, did – who – what was – Aliyah Van is our guest. What um, – what was the toughest decision – that you had to make in, in the poll, in the preseason poll? Yeah. Um, was there a I team like the was, was there a team that, like, you're really on the fence about or, or a spot? Team, certainly. Um, I will say we had the option to uh, readjust our vote after the Wake Forest news and Sam Hartman uh, was declared out of football. So I took them out of my top 25 naturally because I was like, I don't know what they are without him. Mm -hmm. um, I think the toughest part is outside of the top 10 coming up with like 11 through 25. And when you get down to like 16 through 25, you're like, really, who cares? Um, like, what's the difference going to be? Uh, and you're just kind of filling spots at that point. And I really didn't know what to do with the American teams like Houston Central Florida, who I ended up ranking. Uh, 
And then with some of the, yeah, some of the SEC teams too, I was like, I feel like Tennessee is going to be really good this year. So I want, I put them in my top 25. Yeah. I see. I'm looking at your, at your voter here. You had Houston and central Florida, um, 23, 24 respectively. And Tennessee you had at 16. Um, the other thing that I'm, I'm just, I'm curious about is and looking and you're not alone in this number. I mean, you have a Texas A&M preseason number eight, um, and they are in the preseason top 10, uh, it, is, it has been a rarity for a team to be unranked at the end of, of a season and be a preseason top 10 team the, the next year. Why were, you, uh, why were you confident putting A&M not only ranked, but in your top 10? It's that number one recruiting class. And I also know that they're going to have Haynes King and Max Johnson competing for that quarterback spot. Uh, I just think that, and they also, they had a big win last year over Alabama. I think they're still going to be a good team. Um, I was a little shaky about putting them in the top 10, but then I also, when it comes down to it, Matt, like you're kind of thinking, who else do I put in the top 10? Right. Um, I mean, maybe Oregon, I could have stuck in that spot. Oklahoma State, uh, Oklahoma, those were three, those were a couple other teams I thought about putting up in there. But really that number one recruiting class, and I, I thought, meant a lot and is going to change the trajectory of the team. You're not going to have Zach Calzada at quarterback anymore either. So, um, yeah, that was a difficult one. I still think they're probably a little bit overrated. At it. Personally, even though I put them at eight, I kind of look back on it and I'm like, huh, why did I put them that high? But, mm. yeah, it's that number one recruiting class. Uh, Leah Van is with us. Hey, before um, you go, I wanted to pivot and get any other thoughts you may have right now on uh, on fall camp. You've been out there, obviously. We're, we should, I think – uh, provided Brian Kelly doesn't change a policy, get to watch an entire scrimmage on Wednesday, which is going to be crazy uh, inside of Tiger Stadium. But so far with the availability we've had, anything, any like big uh, overarching storyline stand out to you so far with LSU? I wrote a story on Noah Kane, the running back transfer from Penn State. He's been getting a lot of first team reps, and yeah. I just feel like he looks like a veteran there. I think he's going to be really good. I think Jaden Daniels and Garrett Nussbier are in a really close competition. Um, I'm excited to see what Garrett can do since we didn't get to see him last Thursday in a full-on scrimmage setting. Um, and I also think Malik Neighbors is a big wide receiver to watch this year, and he's been transitioning to that slot position. And his just seeing his footwork today in drills and his quickness and his shiftiness, I think that he's going to surprise a lot of people with his athleticism. I know that Kayshawn Boutte is a big guy, but – I think Malik Neighbors is a guy to watch. Uh, anything on the defensive side? Defensively, um, I'm excited to – who was it? Colby Richardson was yeah. playing a lot of first-team reps. I don't know why. I don't know if that's going to stay. Uh, but I'm also excited to see what some of these newer guys can do, that the transfers and um, even like some of the freshmen, like Harold Perkins as a linebacker. I saw him get in there. Um, and I've seen uh, Jalen Davis Robinson. I think I'm excited to see him. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's, those are some good storylines to keep an eye on. Uh, she's on Twitter at LVan underscore sports. Uh, send all your angry tweets about uh, the AP poll to her <laughs> there at LVan underscore sports. Uh, like I said, I would actually have no desire whatsoever, I think, to be a, a poll voter. So, uh, so Godspeed to you and your Twitter mentions the rest of the way and the rest of the season. Uh, thank you, Leah. We'll, uh, we'll see you out there on Wednesday. See ya. All right, we'll see. It's after further review. Um, we're brought to you by the Aesthetic Medicine and Anti Aging Clinics of Louisiana, Blue Bonnet in Baton Rouge, Ambassador Caffrey in Lafayette, and online at theantiagingclinics.com. That's theantiagingclinics.com. Remember, a simple blood test can let you know if you're a candidate for hormone replacement therapy. No matter what your age is, it's about how do you feel. Do you feel sluggish? Do you struggle to sleep at night? Do you feel tired and groggy when you wake up? Do you struggle to lose weight, to burn fat, to build muscle? All that's a natural part of aging, and it happens at a different rate in every single human. And a simple blood test can let you know if you're a candidate for hormone replacement therapy, safely, affordably supplement you to get you to healthy levels again, to get you feeling better. It's the Aesthetic Medicine and Anti-Aging Clinics of Louisiana. Baton Rouge, Lafayette, and online at theantiagingclinics.com, theantiagingclinics.com. Um, yeah, I wrote that down, by the, I, by the way, um, and, and I get it. If you're in LSU circles and you dump on A&M, that almost feels like you know throwing chum in the water with sharks circling. I get it. But 
that really for me in the top 25 is the big, there were two big takeaways. Um, the ACC has the second most ranked teams. Uh, NC State is number 13, Pitt is number 17, and Wake Forest is number 22. So the ACC would be my biggest takeaway. And my second biggest takeaway would be Texas A&M uh, being in the preseason top 10. Uh, they were unranked last year, and they're number six preseason this year. Uh, Texas A&M has the second best preseason ranking for a team that finished the previous season unranked ever. Ohio State was number three in the 1972 preseason poll after finishing the 71 season unranked. Notre Dame started number six in 1983 after finishing unranked in 1982. If you're wondering how those teams finished, Ohio State went nine and two and finished number nine. Notre Dame went seven and five and was unranked. So uh, it's it's blue bloods that get the benefit of the doubt. It's all brand, but I just don't get it. Um, I think Texas A and M next year, when this recruiting class plays a year and becomes the core of the team, then we could probably look at A and M and say, all right, they're ready to make their move. What? I would be stunned if A&M finishes this season in the top 10. Stunned. If they do, I tip of the cap to them. Um, but I'd be stunned. Okay, uh, man, I'm late. It's after further review. Quick break. Uh, we'll continue. I do want to talk a little bit, but give you some of my thoughts on Saints-Texans, the recap from Saturday, and a lot of your feedback. If you want to jump aboard, you can. Uh, calls, texts, emails, tweets. You can text us, 296-4400, 396-4400. We'll continue. AFR. AFR is brought to you by Rouse's, the official supermarket of the New Orleans Saints. If you were watching the Saints game on Saturday, did you see the Shoppa style ad? Only in New Orleans could you get a Nola bounce dude like Choppa and call it Shoppa style, where Choppa is actually the one doing the pickup delivering for Deuce McAllister in the truck. Great spot. If you haven't seen it yet, I, I absolutely loved it. I was laughing the whole time. Rouse's, the official supermarket of the New Orleans Saints. And, of course, what they're expressing is they have delivery and pickup options. So the pickup is you go to the Rouse's app or the website, select your items. They'll go shop for you. When you pull up into one of the designated spaces, they'll bring your groceries out to you. It's all about saving you time. And, of course, they have delivery options as well. If you can't physically get to Rouse's, they'll deliver your groceries to your home. Rouse's. Need a hot dinner option tonight? Rouse's has got you covered. Rouse's. This feels like home. Call Mr. Electric today for electrical repairs, upgrades, and installations. Bayou Ford has $14,000 off MSRP on a new 2021 Ford F-150. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile powertrain warranty and free delivery. If you need sales or service, the crew at Bayou is going to do right by you. This is a house call. This is a follow-up appointment. This is a diabetes checkup. This isn't just more convenient care, it's more advanced care. This is innovating health care at Louisiana's number one hospital, Auctioner. 
Are you a licensed contractor? There's lots of good contractors in Louisiana doing work the right way, but unfortunately, too many unlicensed contractors are working outside the licensing requirements. Working as a contractor in Louisiana requires a license for the company doing the work. The Louisiana State Licensing Board for Contractors wants to help you get licensed to allow you to conduct work legally. It's not difficult to get the license. We can help you. Go to lacontractor.org for more information. Licensed contractors, it's the law. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Light beer shouldn't taste like water. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Relief Windows, Windows Doors Siding, call 288-8138 or visit reliefwindows.com. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria. Check out dropbiscuit.com and browse our growing library. While you're there, be sure to subscribe to Pops, Fame, You Talking to Me, For the People, Well Stated, or whatever your southern flavored audio biscuit you might fancy. That's Drop Biscuit. Com. No mention of LSU Daily? LSU Daily. No mention of Rosters to Riches? Rosters to Riches. No mention of Scone and T? Scone and T. Moose with the box. Oh, sure. Throw that one in there. Sure. It's, it's, that, those, those it's not on, in baseball season, you jerk. Ah, those aren't on the uh, promo read, Matt. We should take that up with our, our people who write copy here. Rosters to Riches is an NIL pod that I do with Jonathan Pixley from Match Point. Uh, episode 3 will drop tomorrow. It drops every Tuesday. So that'll drop tomorrow. And if you're not subscribed yet to LSU Daily, I'd greatly appreciate it. It's, um, I like to say it's AFR shrunken down in about less than 30 minutes uh, of LSU content if you want it every day. Uh, and it'll drop at 6 a.m. every day, every weekday. Um, there was something, oh, a couple of texts. I told you you could always text the show and I'll get to them uh, that, are, that are coming in here. Uh, Chase L. said, Matt, you may have addressed this. What type of degree did Miles Brennan obtain while at LSU? Um, mentions relationships in town. He should be fine. Yeah, uh, he, he was a sports admin grad, so I don't know what Miles wants to do in the future, but I would agree he will he will have his options to do what he wants. Um, Mason Mars said, hey, man, love the show. If Max Johnson never transfers, where do you think he would stand in this quarterback race? Well, if Max Johnson had never transferred, he would be your incumbent. Miles Brennan would have never come back, and Jaden Daniels would have never come in. That's, that's the part that I think sometimes we forget as far as the connect the dots. Miles Brennan, of course, was injured, missed all of 2021, and Max Johnson was the starter. So he was an incumbent. Ed Ogeron gets fired. So Miles entered the transfer portal in November. Brian Kelly was hired in December, and a short time after Brian Kelly was hired, Max Johnson left. So the only scholarship quarterback was Garrett Nussmeyer. At what point, Brian Kelly went and talked to Miles Brennan and said, hey, look, you're going to compete for a job wherever you go. Come compete for a job here. And so that's when Miles decided to come back. And then Jaden Daniels entered the portal and picked LSU. So all of those dominoes would not have fallen if Max Johnson had not entered the portal. Miles would be somewhere else, and Max Johnson would be the incumbent starter with Nussmeyer and Howard behind him. That's that's how it would look, but that's not how it went. And so... Um, this, this roller coaster uh, continues. Uh, by the way, uh, Rob Neely uh, said, Muse, no mention of Ben Taylor. Clinched the putt for the national champions in 2015. He earned his PGA Tour card yesterday. I missed that, but congrats to Ben Taylor, man. Because remember, he, he so had the So you, hard... you hate Curtis Thompson. No. Now you hate Ben Taylor as well. No. Guy earns his tour card. He can't... Oh, you mentioned Parker Bug, Bug getting a call up. Mr. Musso at the uh, box. Well, yeah. Baseball guy. No love for the golf guys. Why do you hate the golf guys? I don't hate the golf guys. Why do you hate I was gonna just tell. Remember Ben Taylor? I think he was the guy who lost his tour card for not signing the the score card. Remember that was crap. Yeah. So I'm glad he got it back. Yeah, no. All right. 
you can feel free to text me, 225-396-4400, 396-4400. Uh, save that number in your phone. Text me. A lot of y'all text me all, all day and night. Um, you do that or during the show either way. Um, you probably saw this over the weekend. So the Saints played the Texans. You, you know that. And the Saints lost the game, which was a, a little disappointing with the way that they lost it. But um, one of the things that I wanted to see was the rookies, of course. And it was a little surprising to a lot of people when Pro Football Focus put out their week one preseason grades for the rookies. And the highest graded first round offensive rookie in week one of the preseason was Trevor Penning. Trevor Penning, highest graded first round offensive rookie in week one of the preseason. Uh, Garrett Wilson, Kenny Pickett, Charles Cross followed. And by the way, Penning was by a wide margin. Penning was at a 90.9 grade. Garrett Wilson was at 78.7. So pro football focus loved the day that Trevor Penning had. Now, they go back and rewatch film again, and they do make corrections at times, and then they sort of um, pare down the grade. So one thing that we learned about Trevor Pennick from the pro football focus grade is he was nearly perfect as a run blocker. He got a, he, he, They graded him at 96.4 for a run blocking grade in week one that was first among all players in the preseason. He had the best run block, blocking grade for all players in week one of the preseason. Now, he also played a lot of snaps. Uh, he played um, 57 snaps. So the Saints took Trevor Pettig and just threw him into the deep end. It wasn't, hey, look, go wade, you know, just go get into ankle deep water. It, it wasn't even, hey, look, just wade until it comes up to your waist, but you're still comfortable and you can stand. It was, hey, we're just shoving you into the deep end. And as a run blocker, he was flawless. Now, we all watched it. He gave up five pressures. He gave up a sack. So the the pass blocking has has to come along for what it's worth. Pro Football Focus gave him a twenty eight point six for a pass blocking grade. So off, not not just bad, awful, but a ninety six point four is a run blocking grade. So it averaged out as they regraded to an eighty six point two, which was still the best among first round rookies in week one. There's also only three players. This was according to Pro Football Focus. Only three other rookies that played more snaps in the preseason than Pennick. Uh, Jacksonville Jaguars left guard Nick Ford, uh, Luke Tanuda of the Bills, and Daniel uh, Falale of the Ravens. And then Pennick. So the Saints are, are seeing what they have in him very clearly, and they are trying to ramp him up as quickly as possible. And quite honestly, it went about as, act, as exactly as I thought it would for his first ever NFL action. He was, we know that he is a physical, mauling offensive lineman. I expected him to be awesome, moving bodies in the run game. Completely expected that. I also expected that when you go from the FCS to the NFL, even in the preseason, you're going to have to get used to the speed around the edge. And he was probably going to struggle in pass blocking. Also had a penalty, which was negated because... They had a sack on Ian Book, so the holding penalty was taken off the board. But, you know, I um, I thought it was about exactly as, as it would go. Now, the question is, week to week, how much improvement do we see? I want to remind you, Teron Armstead became a phenomenal franchise left tackle for the New Orleans Saints. We know he had some injury issues, but when he was on the field, he was as good as there were in, in, the, in the NFL as a left tackle. Teron Armstead made his first start December 22nd of 2013 against Carolina. That was week 16. Made his first start week 16 of his rookie year. So, what if Trevor Pennig uses the next two preseason games and then whatever role he plays throughout the, his rookie season until the game slows down and he's comfortable enough playing that, ta that position? And maybe James Hurst is just awesome and never relinquishes that spot this year and Pennick essentially is a rotational guy and the next year becomes a starter. Or maybe they have an injury on the interior and he plays there as a swing. But I don't know how it's all going to transpire. My point is, I'm a, I am perfectly content seeing him push bodies around as a dominant run blocker, struggle with the speed as a pass blocker in his first ever game, 
to then see how does he start to improve week to week. That's what I want to see from Trevor Penning. How does he improve? Because he's not all of a sudden going to become a bad run blocker. We know that's like, dude got leverage and move bodies. He can do it. Let's see how he improves as a pass blocker. I don't want to see that, that progression. All right, it's after further review. We're brought to you by Shaw Bills Tire and Auto Service, ShawBillsTire.com. Bumper to bumper auto service, name brand tires at wholesale prices. You know where to find them. Locations all over Louisiana, all over South Louisiana. 17 locations. Our newest location is in the LP. That's right, Denham Springs. You now have your own, your very own Shaw Bills. So if you need bumper to bumper auto service or name brand tires, no one's going to sell you the best tires on the road for cheaper prices than Shaw Bills. ShawBillsTire.com. ShawBillsTire.com. Tell them Matt sent you in. Look, schedule your service and go get some work done. They got free Wi-Fi. They got a beautiful Keurig coffee area at Shawbills. It's clean, comfortable furniture. They got TVs. Shawbillstire.com to, uh, to sh- shop tires or to schedule service. Shawbillstire.com. Shawbills, where we keep you rolling. Um, all right. We'll knock out a break. If you missed it, uh, if you missed anything on the show today, catch it on demand. Uh, the the open of the show today was my thoughts on Miles Brennan. My, my all-encompassing thoughts on Brennan's decision, what's next. Uh, it's already up on the LSU, uh, after further review, LSU YouTube channel if you want to check it out. Or you can catch it on demand, all presented by Brett Golf. We did give a full uh, Saints-Texans recap at the start of Hour 2. Matty Hudak did the honors. Aliyah Van was with us. Billy Embody last hour. We talked about Kylan Jackson, the four-star safety out of Zachary. What's next for this LSU uh, class? And, of course, the Brennan news as well. So a lot, tons of football stuff. It's here. I mean, football season is on us. Um, fired up for it. Glad to have you aboard with us here. Okay, um, quick break. When we come back, a few more thoughts of what Dennis Allen had to say about the Saints preseason opener, and I also want to circle back to what else my observations were from LSU practice today. We've talked so much about Brennan and the quarterbacks, but we did get to evaluate practice there to watch about 30 minutes of practice today. I'll tell you sort of what else stood out for me at practice as we continue. Glad you're aboard with us here. It's AFR. AFR. Got a text today on uh, the text line from a listener. Said, hey, man, do you have a list of all your sponsors? I said, well, absolutely. I mean, uh, is there anyone in particular looking for it? Because, yeah, I need AC help. Easy. River City's one-hour air. 752-0001. River City's one-hour air. 752-0001. Just yesterday, we were driving around in the car. Me, Erica, Drew, driving around town. Came up to a red light. We're actually on, um, on Perkins. Looked to our left right there in a the parking lot. A big yellow van with a giant clock on the side. I'm telling you, you see them all over town. And that happened to be a Sunday, by the way. Yep, a weekend, because nights, holidays, weekends, they always work. And they'll never charge you extra to come out. River City's one hour air. Go read the Google reviews. How many How many companies encourage you to go read their reviews? River City's one hour air does. Because for 40 years, they've been stockpiling five-star Google reviews because they've been thrilling their customers for four decades. River City's one hour air. Do what I do. You got an AC issue? Call River City's one hour air. 752-0001. So back to school in style with a new our pre-owned vehicle from Corbell Toyota in Opelousas. It's an easy process and vehicles are getting to our lot weekly. Make the decision now or reserve your new Toyota today. Come on down to Corbell Toyota in Opelousas. That's Happy Town, USA. This isn't just another day. It's so much more. Kelly's life was put on hold when her auctioner primary care doctor discovered a rare blood disorder. Her doctor connected her to an auctioner care team of cancer, heart, and kidney specialists. With multiple primary care locations around Baton Rouge, same-day appointments, and online scheduling, we're relentless about keeping you healthy. Auctioner Baton Rouge, innovating healthcare for Kelly. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance. With the latest in office technology, from desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. Service Mastery Elite create clean, disinfected work environments. As a local business, we take pride in serving the New Orleans and Baton Rouge areas. Our cleaning protocols follow CDC and OSHA standards for healthcare settings, offices, senior living, restaurants, and industrial plants. Contact Service Mastery Elite to get your operation ready for reopening with germ disinfection cleaning. 
Service Mastery Elite, the trusted choice in professional cleaning since 1996. It's no secret, the best oysters in Baton Rouge are at Jolie Pearl Oyster Bar. Enjoy mouth-watering South Louisiana flavor and oysters from all over the country. And don't forget our nightly drink specials. Jolie Pearl Oyster Bar, located in downtown Baton Rouge. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Relief Windows, Windows Doors Siding, call 288-8138 or visit reliefwindows.com. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria. I had their Dinich over at ESPN.com. Uh, I was reporting some future sites of championship games for the college football playoff 2026 set to be held at Hard Rock Stadium uh, in Miami. And uh, that was where the 2021 game, of course, was played. And um, Atlanta, set to be the host city for 2025. Uh, Mercedes-Benz Stadium hosted the 2018 National Championship game. That was, of course, where um, um, Alabama, in overtime, beat Georgia to his heroics there in the second half and then in overtime. So the um, the... We're waiting on an official release from the college football playoff. We know the 2023 title game is going to be at SoFi Stadium and then NRG in Houston. So this year's title game at SoFi, next year it'll be in Houston, followed by seemingly Atlanta and then uh, and then Miami. All right, after further review, we're glad to have you aboard with us here, hanging out on a, uh, a Monday edition of AFR, which has been certainly eventful. The um, NFL Top 100 is doing their uh, – their list, of course, it's a list voted on by players ranking the top 100 players in the NFL. Uh, they released last night numbers uh, 100 through 51, counting backwards. The Saints had uh, five players on the list. Uh, Marshawn Lattimore was the first one to come in at number 89. Demario Davis at number 74. Uh, Tyron Matthew is at number 70. Cameron Jordan at 69. And then Alvin Kamara at number 51. So five Saints so far. I'm curious to see how we know, like for a fact, well, you know, I say this, but considering the injury last year, maybe not, Ryan Ramchick would be the most obvious still to be on the list. Um, and pre-injury, I would say the same about Michael Thomas. But given that Thomas has missed essentially two seasons, I don't know that he's going to be on the list. And given that Ryan Ramchick missed essentially half of last season, I'll be curious there as well. I believe David Onyemata deserves to be on the list of the top 100 players in the NFL. I do not think he will be, but um, that that I think will be one of the snubs. Let's see where Ramchick comes in because I'm I'm going to assume that if you're the best right tackle in the NFL, you're going to find your way on this list somewhere. Where? Uh, I don't know, but is he in the top 50? That will be fascinating to watch. But five Saints players were named uh, on were listed in the top. Uh, 100 to 51. Now we'll see the rest of the, the top uh, 100 released uh, from the NFL. I wanted to get to a couple of more uh, observations from LSU football practice today. So much of the conversation on this show, understandably, has been around Miles Brennan. It, it's the end of an era. It's a guy who you know, I can remember. I, it's, it's weird when you do this job for as long as I have. You... When you do so many shows and so many hours and so many interviews, 
you forget things. Like it'll often happen where people will come up and say, oh, do you, I remember when you did that or said that or that take or interviewed that guy and I have no recollection of it. It's just, if you, if you boil it down this way, five, five, hour, five days a week, three hours, that's 15 hours a week. So 15 hours a week over 52 weeks a year multiplied by going on 13 years. I've literally done 10,000 hours of radio. It, it's, and if you do three you know, interviews per show on average, I mean, you do like, I'm talking tens of thousands of interviews. It's impossible to remember them all. So when, when one does stand out, it usually is, is pretty special. And I actually remember when Miles Brennan committed to LSU. And it usually, let's just be frank, usually high school athletes are not good interviews. Usually they are not. Uh, they're just young people. They're not polished. They're not made for that. And it's fine. It's, it's what it is. But I was doing a show at Pluckers. It was when we were still doing remotes. And I was doing a show at Pluckers, and I had Miles Brennan on the show. After he was at Stanislaus, he had just committed to LSU. And I still remember going through his whole journey with him. From, uh, of course, Katrina, his family moving to Destin. They lived on a Hatteras. I mean, they lived on a yacht in, De in Destin uh, after the storm. And then ultimately, when... The boys were, you know, ready to start playing football. They moved back to to the Bay Area, or the Bay Area, to like Bay St. Louis, the Bay Area, the Gulf Coast, Mississippi Coast, and um, so that that way they could play. His brother, of course, went to Ole Miss, suffered a, a terrible injury, which cost him his career, uh, which unfortunately ended up being sort of foreshadowing for Miles. But I remember being so impressed by a guy that young who was thoughtful and a great storyteller and passionate about football and excited about the Tigers. And um, it, it that feels like forever ago because it was. <laughs> it was forever ago. Um, and and I, I understand why Miles was the sentimental favorite, why LSU fans largely wanted him to win this job. You wanted him to get the, the Matt Flynn storybook ending of a guy who was patient, waited his turn, battled a lot of adversity, got his opportunity and seized it. But uh, that just apparently wasn't in the cards here for Miles, and he's going to go on to something else in life. So I know we wish him all the best. Um, the other big observations that I had today was we did see, yeah, after Brian Kelly made mention last week of Mason Taylor, when LSU was running at the start of practice the two-minute offense, Mason Taylor did run second at tight end behind Cole Taylor. Cole Taylor took the first rep, and Mason Taylor took the second. Uh, I don't think that that's in any way indicative of to say, like, that's the final depth chart. I'm just saying today when they were running that and they subbed, Cole Taylor was first and the next in was Mason Taylor. And they did throw him a pass in the two-minute drill on the right sideline. Um, Noah Kane took the first reps at running back during that same drill. But I really think at this point, Kane and Emery are interchangeable. Interestingly, the way that they've set up practice is when we first get in, they're doing individual periods then the whole offense comes together and they run against a scout defense, which is basically just offensive players wearing shirts standing in positions so you get a look. Uh, and then they go back and do more individuals. Well, when they went into that period um, with the whole offense and you know, Mike Denbrock's calling out the plays, uh, Armani Goodwin actually went second. It was, it was Kane Goodwin with Emery going third. Uh, make of that what you will, but I, I really genuinely think at this point they are they are going to have a running back rotation. I, I don't think it's going to be a thing where you have one guy that is just the bell cow, unless if once they get into into game action, someone just establishes themselves and and cl very clearly grabs a hold of of that of that job. Uh, defensively, probably the guy that I'm going to be most interested in watching is going to be Colby Richardson. He's the McNeese transfer. He, again, was taking reps with the ones at corner. It's worth mentioning that a lot of guys are taking reps with the ones. And when I say the ones, it's very clear w when the defensive line is out there. When you have Ollie Gay, Mason Ta um, uh, Mason Smith, Jaqueline Roy, you've got uh, B.J. Ojolaria, Jack, and then your safeties right now, your, your first two safeties are Major Burns and Jay Ward. So... 
when that alignment is out there, we're looking at, okay, well, who are who are the corners? And today it was Jarek Bernard Converse. And at one point I saw Makai Gardner. And then at one point I saw um, Colby Richardson rotate in as well. Also saw Seven Banks rotate in. So I think those four guys are clearly your first four boundary corners that may all play um, because I don't think there's much separation yet. We'll, we'll learn a lot more on Wednesday when they have a full scrimmage in Tiger Stadium and we get to watch it. And hopefully we get to see ones-on-ones and to see who plays where and when. But I think right now they're trying to decide among four guys at corner and probably five guys at inside linebacker to see how that rotation is going to go. And maybe they're building more depth. One of the takeaways I think that I've had, and I've said this several times and I'll stand by it, if I have one thing that I would tell you I'm more comfortable in having seen them now, it's the defense. I I do believe that this defense with Matt House is going to be very good. I, I'm not telling you I think they're going to be Georgia from last year good, but I think their defensive line rotation is very talented. We've all talked about that. They've got veteran edge rushers. Uh, they've added veterans in the secondary that are all very competent players. Again, I'm not telling you you're going to be Georgia from last year. I just think this defense is going to be good enough to keep LSU in a lot of games. How will the offense come along is is the big question. And as we mentioned often, special teams as well. I did watch Mata and Debert kick today. Mata was a little more consistent. Uh, both both are lefties, by the way. Mata and Debert both are you know, left-footed kickers. But you know they, I, I don't know how you simulate. It's impossible. It's impossible to simulate what it's like to kick in a game with the game on the line. It's impossible to simulate that in practice. Just like you're putting for the win at a major championship. It is impossible to simulate. No matter how many times you practice, you kick, you putt, whatever, you cannot simulate the pressure. So I I don't know that we will actually get that answer until we see either one of those guys in a game actually go and deliver. Uh, But we'll get to see uh, a scrimmage on Wednesday. We'll get a little more answers, uh, a little more a clarity toward it. All right, it's after further review. Uh, Otter is back in Baton Rouge. Thank God. Uh, he was scorching hot. You know the gif of the man walking who's just on fire? Like, that was Jimmy with his baseball picks. And then he took a month off and went to Del Mar, and now he stinks. Let's hope he gets back on the straight and narrow. We'll wrap up with Otter Locks next. AFR. Brought to you by the Baton Rouge General Hospital, brgeneral.org. BRGeneral.org. It's where you can go to learn more about the Mayo Clinic Care Network. The Mayo Clinic Care Network. You've heard of the Mayo Clinic if you're not altogether familiar. But the Mayo Clinic is one of the foremost medical centers in the world. And the Mayo Clinic formed what they call the Mayo Clinic Care Network. And in certain markets, that allows exclusive access, clinical collaboration with local physicians, with the physicians and the experts at the Mayo Clinic, and access to their world-renowned research. And in Baton Rouge, that is the Baton Rouge General Hospital. BRGeneral.org. BRGeneral.org to learn more about the Mayo Clinic Care Network. And oh, by the way, that's at no extra cost to you. Baton Rouge General, expanding healthcare in the Baton Rouge area. Learn more online at BRGeneral.org. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, Our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz vans. Eli's always been into grilling. It took us a while to see it, but the signs were there. What are you doing, Eli? I knew grilling was my thing. I have been talking about it throughout my career. Happy with the results? 
I am. Got the new grill from barbecueguys.com. It performed great. My advice, as I always told my boys, do more of what you're born to do. Barbecue Guys, for those who were born to grill. You want cheese on your burger, Pops? I'll take a little cheese. Crime has serious consequences, but anyone can make a mistake. If you find yourself in trouble with the law, know that you have rights, and it's okay to demand them. The law offices of O.C. Brown are here to protect you and your rights. Felony or misdemeanor, DUI or drug charge, no matter what crime you're accused of, you still have rights. Let the law offices of O.C. Brown uphold them. Call 225-343-1111, your law firm for a lifetime. This summer, meet Acura's heroes of performance. Only available at the Acura Summer of Performance. This summer, visit your local Acura dealer for attractive offers on the MDX. Further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Relief Windows. Windows, doors, siding. Call 288-8138 or visit reliefwindows.com. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria. Down the stretch, we come final segment here on a Monday edition of AFR, presented by Relief Windows. Windows, doors, siding, Relief Windows, and reliefwindows.com. One thing left to do. Let's find out what we're betting on tonight. It's time for Otter Lock. Otter Locks, presented by Workbox Services. For over 20 years, Baton Rouge's leader on on-site construction, industrial, and residential services. So we turn to the one and only, the incomparable and often incomprehensible, freshly returned from Del Mar, the Otfather himself, Jimmy Ott. Otter, how are you? I'm doing great, man. Just working in the yard every day, a couple hours, just purging the system from... The West Coast and all the humidity they were complaining about, and, uh, <laughs> and also uh, that that turbulent run we had in Major League Baseball. So let's get I'm it back to, on track, man. I'm ready know. to get my edge back. You know, right? you were you, know? Uh, you were the personification of the walking man on fire gift that people use, and then you left, and uh, you just became a wet blanket. So let's get it yeah. back. What do we got tonight, on? All right. Um, First of all, the game that we, we passed on because uh, Kyle Schwarber was, was out of the lineup tonight. Uh, but we were looking at that one. That one's already gone, but I'm just mentioning, just sharing some notes with you. Um, okay. Dodgers in Milwaukee. Uh, Urias, I mean, you talk about Kershaw, talk about Gonsolin, talk about some of the others. Man, how about Urias now? It's 122 and two-thirds innings now on the season. His whip is sub one. Uh, he is... He's on fire, man. And Peralta, his third star back, he did improve his second star, but this Milwaukee team is missing a little bit since they uh, since they didn't re-sign uh, Josh Shader. Taking minus one and a half, even money. Dodgers, minus one and a half, even money. Okay, money line play on the Dodgers. All right, uh, San Diego and Miami, Musgrove and Alcantara. Uh, first five under is three and a half. First five under three and a half. Alcantara did give up three runs in the eighth inning. He started up, I mean, it was 100, 170 innings pitch around that number right now. It's a lot, but early on the first five, he should be fine against San Diego. Uh, he's very tough at home as well. Uh, under first five, under three and a half. Okay. And then one other little dog here, but um, it's a, it's a, there's about four games tonight where the, the, the pitchers, their last start was against the same team. Now, this wasn't a uh, rematch of a Strider versus Carrasco matchup, but 
Strider did just face the Mets. The Mets uh, swept them uh, in City Field. Now they go to Atlanta for a three-game set. Got a five-and-a-half game lead right now. Um, they just pounded Strider. So this same lineup, looking at him again, advantage the Mets lineup. Carrasco is Levitt is less two or less runs. He says for 35 is what I have. I'm looking sure at all 40. But, 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 but things are <laughs> things are coming together as we speak. You know, I drove to Brulee just to get on the west side of the river to get, you know, <laughs> you know, just get, get it going today. Uh, <laughs> I actually love <laughs> the confidence. I love yes. how on point you just were. I mean, that was that was that was a batting practice moonshot, Otter. Let's convert some. Let's cast some tickets tonight, Otter. Where are meatloaf, you? a little meatloaf. Let's get the rouge. I'm gonna end up the meatloaf here at Rouge. Thinking of meatloaf, panties here. So we're having a good time over at Rouge for you. Have a good one. All right, Jimmy. Uh, He's free. Get time with Jimmy. He's back. The Otter's back, baby. Let's cast some tickets. We'll see you tomorrow. AFR. As we get on down the road, we remind you about the Williamson Eye Center. I tell you what, Jimmy's seeing clearly again, isn't he? Didn't couldn't you feel it? Jimmy, of course, is a Williamson Eye Center patient, Dr. Blake Williamson. Uh, I've made fun of Otter for so many years. SEC Media Days. We're out there eating dinner. He's got the glasses on the end of his nose. He's holding up the flashlight. He's holding up the flashlight on his phone with the menu five feet away just so he could see it in the restaurant. No more. The otter had the lens replacement surgery. Uh, I couldn't see my hand in front of my face. Genetically awful eyes. I had LASIK still seeing better than 2020. Seeing 2015, Williamson Eye Center can make it happen. Eye care, eyewear, or eye surgery. Family eye exams. If you do own glasses or need glasses, buy one. Get one 50% off all this month. Remember. Williamson Eye Center has a solution. 924-2020. Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram has $12,000 off MSRP on all new 2022 Ram Black Widow trucks in stock. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile powertrain warranty and free delivery. If you need sales or service, the crew at Bayou is going to do right by you. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. This is a house call. This is a follow-up appointment. This is a diabetes checkup. This isn't just more convenient care. It's more advanced care. This is innovating health care at Louisiana's number one hospital, Auctioner. Are you a licensed contractor? There's lots of good contractors in Louisiana doing work the right way, but unfortunately, too many unlicensed contractors are working outside the licensing requirements. Working as a contractor in Louisiana requires a license for the company doing the work. The Louisiana State Licensing Board for Contractors wants to help you get licensed to allow you to conduct work legally. It's not difficult to get the license. We can help you. Go to lacontractor.org for more information. Licensed contractors, it's the law. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance with the latest in office technology. From desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. Service Mastery Elite 